Ya, Hete, please. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry. Please switch on your video. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. A very warm welcome to all of you. Thank you for being a part of this project with us. Uh, at Population First, particularly through our Ladley initiative, We have dedicated nearly two decades to fostering a more gender-sensitive media environment. Our partnership with UNFPA has provided invaluable opportunities to critically assess the realms of OTT films and advertising. However, the emergence of social media as a primary source of information in our lives cannot be overlooked. So we have developed this social media influencer mapping exercise. to examine, the, examine this space critically. To help us with this campaign, we got the LV media team on board with us, uh, who help brands and influencers connect with a global audience. Today's workshop aims to enhance our influencers' capacity to adopt a more gender-sensitive approach towards content creation. Uh, so, Without further ado, let's start with the workshop. I would now like to call Mr. Sriram Haridas, Deputy Representative of UNFPA India, for the keynote address. Mr. Haridas, a Sri Lankan national, brings nearly 20 years of experience in strategic planning and programming in development and humanitarian context. Prior to joining UNFPA India, he served in UNFPA Sierra Leone, where In addition to overseeing the implementation of large-scale donor-funded projects, he also co coordinated UNFPA's response to the Ebola crisis. Mr. Haridas has spent many years with UN UNHCR in Sri Lanka, Afghanistan, and South Sudan. He is passionate about rights and uh, about rights and choices of women and girls, and a strong believer in amplifying voices of youth and adolescents. Over to you, sir. Thanks, uh, thanks, Hethel. Uh, greetings, everyone. It really gives me great pleasure to join all of you today afternoon. Uh, and let me also um, thank all of you for taking time to join this important conversation as well. I think Hethel has given a long uh, description about me. So hopefully you are now very familiar about me. But some of you might not be very familiar about uh, with my uh, organization, um, UNFPA. So uh, UNFPA is the United Nations Population Fund. Uh, we are the lead UN agency for delivering a world where every pregnancy is wanted, every childbirth is safe, and every young person's potential is fulfilled. We also work towards achieving what we call as uh, three zeros. Uh, that is uh, zero preventable maternal deaths, zero unmet need for family planning, uh, zero gender-based violence and harmful practices. We have been working in India since 1974, uh, supporting the Indian government and the state governments uh, to improve sexual uh, and reproductive health and rights, uh, achieve gender equality, uh, and eliminate harmful practices such as uh, child marriage, gender bias, sex selection, um, and also address uh, gender-based violence, uh, and more importantly, also to uh, empower young people. Uh, so the obvious question is, uh, why am I uh, speaking with you today? Um, The simple answer is, uh, as all of you know, uh, our daily routine nowadays is uh, consumed so much by the social media that uh, now we are in an era where we simply cannot live without it anymore. Uh, I'm sure that all of us have these uh, smartphones with us. Uh, and social media has changed the way we interact with each other. Uh, it has also resulted in the creation of a new group of people, uh, the influencers, all of you uh, who have gathered here. Uh, you, all the influencers who are here, are now shaping the thinking of common people uh, through the power of uh, persuasion. Uh, people actually relate to you much more. And you also have the gift of uh, storytelling. Uh, and and, and that, that is really a gift. Uh, because the authority all of you command in your niche areas, I saw in the comment that one person put that, you know, he is a, a food producer uh, from Delhi. So I'm sure that all of the influencers gathered here would have their own niche areas. So you have the expertise in your niche areas. Uh, you have uh, built trust with your audience. Uh, and whenever you share the information, it is looked upon as uh, very much credible. Uh, and it actually shapes public opinion and perceptions. Uh, and it, in fact, influences behaviors as well. So the combination of your online personality, 
uh, your charisma, your strong online presence, and the ability to engage uh, with followers uh, in actually more engaging ways. That actually helps your followers to build trust uh, in what you are saying and what you are doing as well. Uh, because of your ability to impact uh, opinions, preferences, and behaviors, you can influence your followers on a range of social issues. Uh, I don't know whether uh, the influencers gathered here, whether you actually realize it or no, that actually gives you a lot of power because people actually trust and they believe you. You know, I have my UNFP team here. Every time I say something, they, they always put forward five uh, counterpoint arguments. Uh, and I'm a father of also two teenage daughters. So every time I speak to them, uh, they don't want to listen to me. Uh, but 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 I'm seeing, you know, when they are following a new trend or wearing a new dress and I ask them, how did they come up with this? The answer is, oh, no, we saw it in social media. This is the latest trend. So all of you have a lot of power. Uh, uh, but like this, and I always say, you know, uh, like they say it in the Spider-Man movie, with great power comes great responsibility as well. So you have a responsibility as well. Um, responsibility uh, to be ethically responsible. Uh, responsibility to address some of the social issues that you don't perpetuate some of the discrimination and harmful practices which are prevalent in the society. And one such issue where you can uh, be responsible uh, is the issue of gender equality. You can, uh, through your influence, subtly promote gender equality through whatever you are doing uh, by engaging uh, in open discussions on the issue, uh, ensuring that your content is inclusive, uh, it does not promote gender stereotypes and it amplifies diverse voices. So how do we do that? Uh, then that's the obvious question. So you can do that by engaging in conversations about gender equality, by talking of men and women, uh, and, and also boys and girls in engaging in gender diverse roles, share stories of empowerment, uh, and of course, support campaigns or organization. I'm going to do some self-promotion such as uh, UNFPA, uh, focusing on these issues. Uh, there was a time that all of us were consuming news and content through the mainstream media. Uh, and I'm sure all of you would agree the representation of women and girls in mainstream media uh, has been and still continues to be generally very biased. Uh, they are either linked to the domestic situation or represented as objects to entertain the male viewers. Uh, but as influencers, you can in fact show more real images of women and girls, talk of the everyday issues they face, uh, discuss issues such as uh, body positivity, uh, bodily autonomy. Um, let me also try and give you a couple of concrete examples. Let's take the example of uh, one influencer, uh, Jamila Rizvi. She is an Australian best-selling author, podcast presenter, and gender equality advocate. Uh, she is a famous influencer. I think she has about a following of 1.4 million, 1.5 million on social media. She, in fact, speaks on a range of issues faced by women and girls, like uh, the gender pay gap, sexual harassment at the workplace, uh, discrimination, uh, which follows uh, maternity, difficulties in getting promoted or even being heard in meetings. Um, so, But over time, she has become a guiding force for the millennial women and girls uh, in Australia. Um, similarly, uh, if you look at India, uh, one example that immediately comes to my mind is uh, the likes of uh, Dolly Singh. You know, who, if I'm not again mistaken, has a followership of around 1.5 million, 1.6 million last time I looked. Um, I think if I'm not mistaken, she is an influencer for affordable fashion. That's how she started. But now over time, she has slowly moved on to uh, talking about uh, discrimination, challenges and biases faced by women and girls like body shaming. Uh, and also engaging in conversa conversations with men uh, in positions of power, dealing with uh, online trolls, uh, you know, um, issues similar to that. Uh, so, the, so there are many ways you could influence and advance gender equality. There, there is, uh, especially in the era of social media, there is no kind of one set of rules that you have to do it. You all have your niche market, your, your um, loyal followers. Uh, and the other thing what I've noticed recently is a large number of young people are following uh, social media influencers. Uh, again, so you can really inspire uh, and educate them uh, and really asking them to challenge the discriminatory social norms that actually gives or accord a lower status to women and girls. Uh, again, you can do this by speaking up against uh, discriminatory and sexist language, um, chauvinistic attitudes, uh, and the prevailing gender biases. In doing so, 
uh, you can definitely change social norms. Of course, it's going to take time uh, and also change attitudes and behaviors that continue to uh, perpetuate gender inequality. Um, at UNFPA, uh, I always joke saying that the UN and organization like UNFPA are very slow to kind of pick up on change. Uh, if you and I'm going to be a bit self-critical, uh, I'm not sure how much it will be appreciated my, by my team, which has joined online. Uh, I'm, I'm personally not very impressed with our own social media account, uh, UNFPA's own social media accounts. I think we could learn from uh, all, all the influencers who have gathered here how to be more engaging. And, and that's something you also hope to learn from all of you. Uh, um, but one thing we have done is well is uh, we have actually realized the importance of social media and the role played by the social media influencers. So what UNFPA globally doing is in many countries, countries like uh, Indonesia, countries like uh, Madagascar, Rwanda, Ethiopia, UNFPA is actually partnering with a group of social media influencers to address and change social norms and to advance gender equality. Uh, in many of these places, uh, we have come up uh, or identified social media influencers. UNFPA globally has also come up with uh, what we call as the UNFPA's in influence uh, strategy, which means now if we uh, have influencers who have a substantial number of social media following and who are working on issues uh, which are close to our mandate, such as uh, gender equality, addressing social norms, UNFPA could in fact formally um, um, confer them the title um, either such as UNFPA champion or UNFPA advocate and work with them uh, to spread uh, and uh, raise awareness about some of these issues. Uh, and we are doing that in many countries. For example, in Indonesia, I, I know the Indonesia country office works with a group of 20 social media influencers um, so that uh, messages uh, and information on sexual and reproductive health for young people uh, is spread online. Uh, so there are many ways we could do. And, and one of the hope uh, or, or the wish I have uh, from this training, in, in addition to giving you the tools and ways how you can talk about gender issues, gender equality issues to your followers, is that we would be uh, hopefully able to partner with uh, some of you, if not all, in taking forward these messages and that all of you uh, will become UNFPA champions or UNFPA advocates to advance gender equality. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you so much for again joining. I look forward to the discussions. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to stay for the whole uh, period because of um, some other competing priorities, but I hope to join back before the meeting is over. Thank you. Dhanewa. Yeah, please do join for the panel discussion. Thank you so much, sir. Um, our first session for the day is by Dr. Shada. She is the CEO of Population First. She leads the Ladli Media Advocacy Campaign for Gender Sensitivity. Her initiative engages influencers, scriptwriters, and advertising professionals through awards, workshops, and consultations. She's a former CBFC member and initiated gender analysis in advertisement and film. With a sociology doctorate, Dr. Shaza holds over 35 years of experience in the development sector and teaching at prestigious institutions. Dr. Shada has been appointed as an international consultant by the UNFPA uh, in Bangladesh. Her role involves developing media sensitization modules focused on gender-based sex selection, emphasizing positive portrayals of girls and women to challenge societal bias favoring sons. She has conducted training programs for international agencies, NGOs, and government departments on gender reproductive health and communication plan. Uh, over to you, Dr. Shata. Thank you, Hetal. Um, so I would like to keep this conversation, you know, as light as possible. And um, uh, as uh, Ram has so very beautifully, uh, you know, said, the power of social media, the power of influences is so great. And um, you are the future, of, you know, what you call opinion makers. You are the ones who, you, you are the thought leaders of the future. And I hope you realize your potential and uh, how much you can make a difference to the world and to the people who trust you and who believe in you. So uh, thank you so much for joining us. 
and um, I look forward to uh, you know um, working together and um, doing our little bit to make a difference to the world. It may not be great. It may be. I mean, we may not bring your evolution, but if we can bring a change in the lives of the people who are around us, make them make it more, um, you know, equitable and uh, fair and just. I think that's a big contribution we make to the world. So let me start with one uh, small quiz. So one question will be asked. You have to um, press the answer. I mean, you have to select the answer, and then we will discuss that particular issue. Over to Heather. Yeah, I am launching the quiz. You can see the question on your screen. Have they submitted? Yeah, people are asked. So don't hesitate. See, there is nothing wrong if your, your answer is wrong also. It doesn't matter. We are not here to judge you or to give you marks or anything. What you understand, you just put whatever you think is right. You click on that and uh, we will discuss it. Okay. Done. You have to do it quick because I have only one and a half hours to do this whole session. So if you are spending five minutes in you know, clicking on it, we will be able to do only the quiz and nothing more. Yeah, how many, Pooja? Yeah. Hey, 30 people have answered out of 53. Hmm. Yeah, the others Should must I... be from UNFP and other places, so no point in. Yeah. I am ending the poll then. What is the answer? I mean, what are the options? Uh, you can see it on your screen. I've shared the result. Okay, okay. 38 percent. Okay, okay. I saw this. So the answer is, it is 30%. Okay. Our, our literacy rate is around 70. That means in India, almost one in three women are illiterate. So they don't have access to education for various reasons, schools not being there, restrictions on their movement, and um, poverty, uh, child marriages. There are many number of reasons why children, girls don't have access to, uh, you know, uh, uh, schooling or literacy, uh, being, getting literate. So this is something which is very, very important in a country which is almost on the verge of becoming a superpower. 30% of women in India are not literate. Okay, next question. Hello. So it is in India, at least one in dash women will face some form of violence during their lifetime. How many people you think, how many women you think face violence on a regular basis or Sometime or the other in their life. You can close it, put it. That's great. So one in three women in India and most of 58 of you got, got it correct. Thank you. So 50, 33 percent, three, one in three people, 33 percent of the people face some form of violence or the other in their lives. We are here. We are not talking of gender violence. We are talking of gender based violence like uh, dowry, teasing, violence, rape, etc. Not a regular It's not that. It is about the violence they face because they are women. 
Very nice. Next. Close, uh, so most of you have said 46. The, uh, the correct answer is 5. Do you know how many women gender, what is, how many women out of 1 lakh pregnant women Die due to pregnancy related or childbirth related con con complications. Anybody has an any idea? Per one lakh pregnant women, how many? You can open. You can start. You can answer on the mic also. Yeah. Any idea? You have to be active, otherwise I get bored doing the workshop. How many women you think out of one lakh women, pregnant women, die? I mean, what is the normal rate of death for women? Hello. Uh, hi. Yeah. In my opinion, it would be like 30,000 nearby. 30,000 for one lakh? That is yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. And who else? What else? Oh, just speak on the mic. There's no issue. I believe it's 10 to 20 percent. 20, 20 percent. I'm talking of black. So probably 10,000, 20,000 around that ratio. Oh. It should be actually per every one lakh uh, pregnant woman. Usually the death rate is around three to five. Okay. Imagine three to five per one lakh pregnancies. But in India, that rate is one lakh, 100, around 100 uh, women die per one lakh. Uh, and every hour, five women die giving birth to a baby, which is quite avoidable. And uh, I mean, it is, we cannot justify it. You know, it is, it's really, really yeah. sad that we have uh, such a high um, maternal mortality in our country. And why does it happen? Because once again, they get married early. They don't have education. They get, they have children very early. They have too many children. They're anemic. They don't get uh, the right kind of medical attention, ANC, PNC, etc. So there are so many uh, reasons for women dying during childbirth or around childbirth. So that is something, once again, is a very big issue. And uh, it reflects on the status of women in our country. And, the reason, and what all needs to be done to uh, ensure that they get the right kind of services, they get the... Uh, right kind of development opportunities so that they enjoy a safe and happy motherhood. Okay, next question. This next question is a very easy question. I'm sure all of you will get it right. Yeah, shall we close?
खेतर एटीन परसेंट इट इज फिफ्टीन परसेंट एनी वे सो यू आर ऑलमोस्ट क्लोज टू दिंग सो वी हैव फिफ्टीन परसेंट पार्लियामेंटेरियंस हु आर वेमेन विच इज वंस अगेन कंसिडरिंग दैट वुमेन कॉन्स्टिट्यूट अराउंड फोर्टी नाइन परसेंट ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन इट इज इट्स स्टिल आई मीन इट इज रियली a very sad indicator that we have such poor participation of women in uh, uh, in parliament it has recently gone up otherwise it was generally around 9 and 10% next question There's a lot of lot being written and talked about this. I'm sure you will get it correct. Hello. Close the. you all have said 5% 10% it's actually 15% no no what is it corporate sorry i'm saying the wrong this corporate ha huh. so the percentage is actually 5% imagine in a country and with so many companies and uh, uh, you know with so much happening around in the economic uh, Uh, sphere and uh, uh, it is so sad that we have only five percent of the companies which are in you know, out of the two zero four one listed companies in the national stock exchange. Only hundred have a CEO or a managing director who is a woman. So this is something really uh, uh, very is a very sad uh, state of affairs, and uh, the lot of uh, efforts are being made by BSE and NSE and other. agencies to uh, and train uh, women to become directors but the response has not been very good so there are so many issues why women hesitate to take up leadership positions because one is they do not have the skills second thing is they are not confident and they are afraid of taking the things and also the corporate structure is sometimes not very favorable to um, women who are in leadership uh, 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 positions so Uh, this is something which we really need to address and um, talk about because uh, why why do why why what are the glass ceilings that women experience in their careers and wh- how is it that why is it that they don't move up and uh, uh, head the organizations for which they work so this is something we really need to look into so the next question is uh, yeah please launch the next question फोर्टीन परसेंट वेरी गुड करेक्ट फोर्टीन परसेंट ऑफ वुमेन ओन लैंड वेर इज अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ वुमेन वर्क वर्क ऑन लैंड they work in their farms they work as daily wage laborers or they they work in various capacities but they are not the owners of the land so only 14% of the women own land in india next question i'm sorry i look into the camera like this because i'm not wearing my specs and then i have to go closer to the screen to see it
Yeah, close it. Okay, 24%. Now I know what is the, how you're making the decision because all are 35, 15, 20, and this is the only one which is 24. So you think, ha, huh, this must be the correct answer, right? <laughs> anyway, I'm glad that you got it right. It is 24%. So we, we have to be careful in giving the options. Hmm? Okay, because it's uh, though women work, uh, the the partic work participation of women has been steadily declining, but recently there's a report which said that it has gone up to 32%, which is a good thing. I don't know the veracity of the uh, data, but the fact is that women's participation in workforce has been reducing considerably. So most of the women who work, work in the informal sector, and the participation in the formal sector is, that means around 76% of women work in informal sector and only 24% of them work in the formal sector, which is which has certain benefits, more salaries, better career options, and also other perks like pension and uh, other things. So they are social security options. So that is uh, not available to uh, women who are in the informal sector. I've already launched the next question. Then. Yeah. You can close it. This also you got correct. I'm very happy that you have good understanding of the social, uh, you know, reality. It is 57% of women in India are anemic. Again, same thing, the patriarchal values, which say that a woman should eat last, poverty, and then um, uh, early marriages, repeated pregnancies, all these things also, lack of health care, access to health care, nutrition, all these cause anemia among the women. Okay, next question, please. I'm sure you'll get this also correct. Two, four, five. So every hour, two women are sexually assaulted, which is uh, by the time we finish our uh, workshop, nearly eight women would have faced uh, sexual uh, assault. So that's it. That's a mind boggling number. And uh, we all have experienced it. Uh, when we are on the streets and the street harassment, uh, wherever we go, we find a lot of um, uh, violence. It's not that there's, I don't think there's any woman who has never faced any kind of teasing, violence, sexual assault of uh, some minor or major, you know, kind of a thing. So we really uh, uh, have to address these issues because um, they are very important. And uh, we need to create awareness about uh, these issues, this data, and then uh, create conversations around it by, uh, with men, with boys, with everybody. Okay, so now it's up to you. How I mean, I'm uh, opening up. Please, all of you, switch on the uh, mics, and then tell me how did how how was this? Did you find this surprising? How did you find this uh, quiz? I can't hear you. Yeah, please, quickly, because it's uh, you're all influencers. You have voice, you have confidence, you are there in the social media for everybody. So I don't expect very mute group, at least in this uh, for this workshop. So please talk and uh, be confident. There's nothing, as I said, correct or wrong or anything. We are all learning and we are in the process of learning from each other. Yes, uh, Prakjot Kaur. 
I uh, I feel we all have an idea of the situation, like all these questions, but the exact percentage, I feel that's something that we've never probably come across or paid attention to. But the grave, the, the grave situation of what we are facing every day, it is not a surprise to most of us over here. It is what you're saying is the you knew that these problems are there, but you didn't know the extent to which these problems are there. Yes, right? The exact percentage probably that was not something that I was aware. No. Anybody else, please quickly. Uh, would it be possible for all of you to switch on your videos? Yeah. Anybody else? Hi, I have a question. So don't you think like at this point of time, wherein we are at this modern age in society, the things are getting better in at least the top tier one cities at this point of time? Yeah, see, the India is not one homogeneous whole, right? We have so much of uh, variation, diversity. So I always say that whatever we are experiencing as a, you know, metro, metro uh, people living in metros, educated, coming from, uh, you know, having all the opportunities and uh, uh, in, in our life, we are very different from the people who are in the rural areas, in the tribal areas, and, uh, you know, um, in across in some states and across the country, the diversity is so much. So, uh, world is changing, definitely, uh, what the world was when I was a child. This is very different from the world that I see today, right? So there is a lot of change and there is a positive change. It's not that we are stuck in the same thing, but there's a long way to go because there are a lot of people who are out of the pale of uh, development, out of the pale of all this modernization that we are uh, talking about. So we need to work with them. We need to bring them also on par with us. So that is the major challenge that we have. If we don't have uh, you know, development that is uh, uh, equitable, then there will be more uh, social stress, social tensions, and there may be more, uh, you know, violence, there may be more, uh, you know, lot of negative social, uh, 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 what you call, develop, uh, uh, negative impacts may be there in the society. For instance, you know, like violence can increase, there may be more uh, aggression, there may be so many things. So it, it is, if for, uh, uh, they say no, one, two. I am, I am there because of you. I am there because of you. Because we, even there is a uniform development, everybody prospers and there is a uh, there is peace, prosperity, happiness. But when only a certain part of the population grows or develops and the rest of them are going backwards, backwards, then there is more chances, there are more chances of strife and conflict. Yes, we'll take two more uh, comments or suggestions and then we'll move on. Uh, hey, Dr. Sharda. So just uh, have one question. Since you have mentioned that we are like improving a lot on these grounds. So Could you please switch on the video because I don't like to speak to blank. Actually, Unless it is a problem. Okay. Yeah, like, so basically my laptop camera is like not working at the moment or I would okay. have to join, like, you know, call with okay. you. No issues, no so, issues. So I just wanted to ask uh, that basically you mentioned that we are changing a lot, like personally, like we are improving on these results. So just wanted to know like what precautions we can take, like as a normal human, since like I belong from philosophy and uh, psychology background. So I have like studied ethics and uh, about, you know, Indian philosophy and psychology as well so just wanted to ask like on the ethical ground what are the correct ways to improve on these things when's your rough notebook are you doing this no like the, the thing is that one is to be uh, somebody uh, uh, i think you have to mute your phone uh see the thing is what is ethical is not to harm anybody and try to try to help or try to make oh. a difference as much as as we can because it's very important that uh, uh, we should not be insulated. We should not uh, think, oh, my life is good. That is fine. That is the reason why we are reaching out to you. Because as uh, influencers, you can play your uh, role. You can, uh, you know, um, uh, you can um, 
be responsible and try to create the create awareness the more the people talk about issues the more there is consciousness about it the more there is a uh, there is a desire or motivation to change things if we don't talk about things and we are insulated then we will not be able to uh, bring about uh, any change so the first step towards change is to open up conversations to talk about to acknowledge something that it it is there and we need to address it that is i think the first step towards uh, bringing about change yeah pooja You raised your hand, Pooja. Oh, uh, man! Being a woman, I also feel and uh, quite uh, these things are quite relatable to me as well. Like, uh, and as you said uh, right now, that speaking about these things is the most and for most uh, important thing because we are not like open to talk even about uh, these mm. things. And uh, the thing is that we all are facing such issues, but we are so hesitant about like talking about them. That if anything happens, we have to just, uh, we have uh, like, uh, we have been, the upbringing of the girls. Is a such problem or like people are not open yeah. to talk even. So I think the first step yes. should be to talk about it. And it should be uh, starting from the hmm. family first. And then we can like uh, move on to like outside and in the neighborhood and in the workplace. So the first so thing is yeah. we yeah. should like we have to start with our daughters, with our sister, with our mother. Like whatever happens, no, they have to and speak also with them. your brother and father. Yes, <laughs> yes, of course. Like this is also showing that we are not like we are so uh in kind of uh, uh like close like uh, where we have to uh, what we have we can say what we uh, we cannot say. And there are so many conditions about it that yeah. is uh, uh, to this person, you cannot uh, say this thing. Uh, you cannot discuss this thing with your father. You uh, you can discuss only with your sister, only with your mother. So there are so many things like uh, that has to be like worked upon. And uh, I think uh, women's life is also equally uh, stressed out and uh, problematic as the men. Uh, like... The thing is that men are also doing so many things. They also face uh, so much stress, but that is addressed and acknowledged and respected that, yes, you are doing. But the same thing the women is also doing, but it is not even, uh, respect is a different thing. It is not even getting acknowledged. So that is uh, like uh, uh, bringing more and more stress in their life and the and their li lifestyle as well. Yep. So I think the first thing that is uh, need to be worked upon is to talk about it. Yeah, uh, it's very important to start, uh, uh, important to talk. And uh, one um, suggestion that I give from my experience is uh, when you're talking to somebody, don't take the position of an adversary because then it doesn't work because people will close, right, you know. But it is important that we talk uh, uh, with a lot of empathy, with a lot of compassion towards other persons because they're not being bad or they're not thinking in a certain way because they're bad or they don't want certain things. But that is the way they have been brought up, right? So we need to have conversations where we have that kind of a, a, a compassion for them. So, uh, for instance, I give this example. I was traveling with my driver. We just attended a program by our team. And then in the car, he said, Madam, I said, so I said, you feel like I'm wearing the wrong way to wear the wrong way. He said, no, no, madam, you're very good. You're wearing the wrong way to wear the wrong way. I said, okay, it's a compliment. So I said, I should be... Yeah, really they are so deep-rooted that even like this seems like impossible to clarify such things. No, no, then I said, no, I told him, I asked him, so I'm wearing the wrong way to wear the wrong way. I should be able to go out free yeah. without any problem. Yeah. I said, your wife also dresses up uh, in sari and blouse and, you know, traditionally. Yes, yes. So does she feel safe in the night? Then um, he said, no, why don't you send her? Because she, she should not yeah. be dressing yeah. anything because she's yeah. dressed properly. Then he looked at me and he said, no, no, it's not like that. This is the mind of people. <laughs> he came to the point without my saying, Oh, I say, kaise, kaise te ho, like, uh, up. like, you know, I didn't confront him in that way. I was just asking him some questions. And then he came to the same point 
that we were saying that it is not so much uh, the women dressing, but it is the uh, men and, and their perception of the women and uh, their entitlement. It shouldn't, be, it shouldn't be like that what you're wearing. That's why the people are like judging you. Uh, but that but is what they should anybody. understand, right? They should understand yes. when they do that. Even a woman who is dressed properly or properly in that sense, quotes, uh, is still, uh, open to violence, right? So yes, when yes. you're doing, when you're having conversations, have compassion, have in a very friendly way the conversation. Don't contradict, don't say you're stupid, you're this, you're that, you don't oh, yes. understand. So that will lead to no, uh, that will lead nowhere. So this is my one small uh, learning from experience. So just have a conversation. Mm. Mm -hmm. So these kinds of questions actually make them also yeah. think and then yeah. understand the problem. Okay, we are running short of time. So next we'll move on. But anytime, please feel free to raise your hand. And then, oh, there's one more person, Dolly Thakur. Dolly, yes. Dolly, you can speak. You are muted. You all know Dolly, right? She's the biggest influencer. In the country, Dolly Thakur. Dolly, you want to talk? Okay, yeah, I do want to talk. Yeah. Okay. Um, I am much older and certainly not as pretty as many of the faces that I see on the screen just now. <laughs> and I, uh, I'm sure I don't have the energy that any of you have. But what I'd like to share is that I have lived my life the way I wanted. I've never had a problem either with father or brother or people that I've been working with. And, I, and those that perhaps know me or know about me will know that I've done a hell of a lot in my 80 years of being on this earth. And it's, um, so I don't, can't understand why other people cannot be as uh, strong and as brave as I have been. I've never had a problem with anybody and I've led my life and I'm very happily too. I have no regrets at all. I've respected men and they've respected me. No one's passed an adverse comment about me. Um, I'm, I don't You're lucky, Dolly. You're very lucky, actually. <laughs> I would say that. You know, I would and say that myself, but the point is, why can't other girls be as confident as... Dolly, your, 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 your background is different, your opportunities were different, you went abroad, you studied and you did a lot of things. You To compare you yourself to somebody who is in the village with no access to school or education or anything is not fair because no, their no, problems, I, I, their uh, like struggles say, are no. much different. I, from went, I went abroad much later, I went abroad to work, but as a child growing up, my adolescent years, they were all in India and they were in various parts of uh, the country. What I would like to say is that well, I feel that the kind of education I had gave yeah, that's me... That's a privilege, right? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I beg your pardon? That's a privilege, the kind of education you had. Exactly. Not many people have now, that. Why can't... I mean, I don't see that these girls have not had those privileges. Don't you think that we now, as working women contributing to society should be able to change the educational system because they're all young women. They're not all in school or college anymore. Do Dolly, education is also highly commercialized. We'll have a talk outside, I mean, uh, offline later because education is no longer the same old thing. It's a business. They call it education business. They call it health business. So there is, there is, it's not the same as it everything has or at my time. Yeah. At my time or at your time, we were, it was very different. So there is, uh, I think, we'll take it offline. Thank you. No, I thought everything has got commercialized. Commercialized and, and uh, that is the reason. Everybody. I'm that not is... an Ambani or a Tata or a Birla. I'm not even mentioning the Adana, Adani or whoever they are. But at, least at the same time, uh, uh, fr I come from a very middle class working background, which perhaps most of you are. I have no commercial background in terms of business or anything. But yet, being 
having had the education and the exposure to the kind of people I've interacted with, it's it's worked and it's given you the confidence to face whatever adversities may have come your way. The uh, fact that all these people are influencers shows that they have those advantages. Shall we move to the next uh, thing, uh, presentation? Yeah, I see Anuja you, on. Hi, Anuja. Hi, we'll move on with the presentation, Dolly. I uh, wanted to just mention one thing here that every time an issue of violence uh, happens or discrimination takes place, it's all about power relations. And, uh, you know, power comes from access to various things, you know, access to resources, decision making ability, all of that. And probably you had it. And a lot of people in India, a lot of women in India do not have that. Uh, because if you look at various things, the gender roles, you look at decision making abilities, <clears throat> there are restrictions on women and girls as compared to men and boys. I think I'll stop here and we'll let Sharda move on. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Pooja, you're starting the presentation. I can't see the screen, Pooja. It just says, huh, okay. Full screen, please. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we'll move forward uh, from what we have been discussing and what uh, Dolly and Anuja have said. First, uh, next slide, please. So why are we actually engaging in this conversation with you? Uh, first and foremost, we believe that uh, believe in building a more gender equal and gender just society. That has been the aim and objective of uh, Lardley campaign. And we believe in the power of media to influence social norms. So uh, whether uh, it is advertisements, films, or whatever, pop culture, it has so much impact on the way people behave, the way people think, the way people, you know, make choices. So we feel we feel the big, the most influential uh, institution in the society is media, and uh, we also acknowledge that in current times, social media is uh, uh, being more and more powerful, and uh, in fact, less, there are less number of print, printed newspapers, uh, print newspapers more and more newspapers are shifting to web uh, uh, publications and everything is on the web and uh, uh, even advertising uh, revenues are going, uh, advertising spends are going more and more uh, towards uh, social media influences and social media promotions. So it is a, it's a emerging and it is a very powerful uh, um, mode of communication, social media and the influences are the most uh, um, you know, important people, if you really want to initiate any conversations about gender and other things. So I have seen some of your uh, posts. So you have, uh, you talk about food, what to eat, what brands to use, what career choices to make, what lifestyles, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Health, what needs to be done to be healthy, yoga, um, you know, life coaches, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. It's an exciting world. I was just ex exploring it yesterday. And so we want to work with you. As uh, Sri Ram has said, it's very important that we work together and um, uh, you know, we have to really amplify the messages across various uh, strata and across various categories of people. And that is possible only through you because you have followers who are so very committed and those who believe in you, who trust you. Okay. So that is the reason why we are having this interaction today. Next. Next. So let's see what, uh, you know, Facebook, um, you know, leaders have said. This is Mark Zuckerberg. He says, nothing influences more people more than a recommendation from a trusted friend. You are the trusted friends of so many people. They regularly follow you. They get influenced by you. They are uh, engaging with you. So your word means a lot to them. And two, and you can be a change maker through your power of communication, through your 
um, through your uh, in network that you have and the bonding that you have with your followers. So that is something which is very, very important. Next. Sadhguru said, social media is one of the most potent tools of change in the hands of citizens. May we use it responsibility to shape the world we live in. So we have a tool, we have the power, we have the skills. So how do we use it? Can we use a part of it to be to bring about change? I'm not saying that all of you become social development uh, influencers. No, you have to be uh, promoting products, you have to be promoting uh, services, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you can spend a little of your time to address the social issues using your influence to make difference. Okay, next. So what is it that we want to change? One is we want to change the social norms which rationalize inequalities. driving they are not equipped to drive, so we should not let women drive. It is it is it's just that you know uh, gender discrimination. No women cannot take uh, uh, you know senior positions. They are not capable of tough decisions, so we should not em employ them in higher positions. Justify violence against women. Oh, I see kapde panti to I see hoga. Uh, you know, pyar karta hai pati isliye do chao thappad mara to kya hua. So there is lot of these kinds of uh, uh, thinking in the population which actually uh, makes it very difficult to address inequalities, discrimination and uh, uh, violence against women. So we need to, as we discussed earlier, we need to start conversations about this and start questioning them. You know, like uh, you know, if a husband loves a woman and so he can slap her, wife also loves a man, so can she slap her, slap him? And what would be the reaction of the world if she slaps him? It's not that there are no women who don't slap their wife, husbands, I'm not saying that. But generally, it is more accepted when a man slaps a woman. So that is the whole uh, social context in which violence takes place. Next. So as we have discussed, one thing is first we have to say the problem exists and uh, and it is a problem. And if we really want uh, holistic development, inclusive development, then we have to address it. And um, the underlying factors of this discrimination are the gender and our gender and patriarchy. And we need to understand what is gender, what is patriarchy so that we are able to address, uh, uh, address the issues better. And um, third thing is create gender sense to content in whatever we are communicating by being conscious of the language, graphics, et cetera, we are using so that we do not reinforce the negative gender social norms and stereotypes. I do a review of ads uh, for impact uh, for uh, Campaign India. And in one ad, they showed a woman uh, saving money, uh, going to the bank, taking a loan, buying the house. And I was so happy how huh? very good good job and then suddenly when the uh, house owner or the you know, the, uh, uh, the real estate uh, agent comes he puts the keys in the hands of the man it's very simple but the fact that you know after all that she has done the keys go to the man so these are very subtle um, inconsequential kind of uh, things you know uh, may appear like inconsequential but they do show that in spite of all her work it is the man who is the master of the house. So these are these subliminal messages and images which we have to be very conscious of. Next. Next, Pooja. So I'll, I'm sure all of you know what is gender. So I'm not going to go into a, into a full session on what is gender and other things. We can do it later if any of you are interested. But um, gender is a social construction. So it tells you we are born boy, girl, or whatever biologically we come with the certain sexual characteristics but then uh you know uh we are told that okay a girl has to behave like this a boy has to behave like this a man has to behave like this a woman has to behave like this and it is conveyed to the person in various ways uh, uh, through caretaker socialization child you know peer pressure gendered work and family role. So there are various ways this message is conveyed and it is done in a very in you know in a very inconspicuous kind of a way and then uh, 
in, uh, and then we get this idea that this is what. So we have what is male and female, which is intersex, what uh, that is the sex part of it, sexual identity. Then we have the gender identity, which is very, uh, it, 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 uh, uh, it is socially, it is a social construct. Because it is a social construct, it varies from place to place, but so from society to society. What is good for a woman in one society is not uh, allowed for a woman in another society. And from time to time, it changes, like, you know, what women were 100 years back or 30 years back and what they are today. It is totally different. And then it's the same for men also. It changes. Uh, that identity, the gender constructs for men and women keep changing over a period of time. And uh, that is something which is... Uh, which uh, uh, which is very important to keep in mind. And because it is socially constructed, we can change it. So what we are looking at is, uh, 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 what does gender do? One is it tells you the behavior, qualities, attitudes, and emotions. So what are the behaviors and qualities and attitudes and emotions associated with men? With men, you tell me first. Quickly, please. Hello. What are the behaviors associated, qualities associated with men? Courageous. Open your mic and talk. Don't raise hand. The most popular fact that men shouldn't cry. Uh, yeah. This is quite often that they, they are supposed to suppress their emotions, whatever they feel. They can't, they shouldn't be openly yeah. showing their vulnerabilities. Yeah. What else? Anybody else? Come uh, on. You all know. Uh, actually, I just want to say about it that in our homes and Indian society, the most important thing is that a person has to live at home. And in that pressure, he understands the woman from his own. I think so. So, it's not that a woman can play a woman, she can play a woman very well. I'm looking towards my mother from like last 30 years and my mom is working and she has a fixed income and where her father is capable, she's always there. But still, it's a load on a woman that she has to play a woman. So, this is the point I just want to talk about. Yeah. Anything else? So, there are a lot of qualities and attitudes and emotions attached to men and women. Like girls are delicate, girls are vulnerable, girls are this, girls are that. And boys are strong, boys are, uh, you know, um, you know, they are, um, they have control over their emotions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And similarly in roles and responsibilities, so just now, as you have said, it is the man is seen as a breadwinner and woman as a home. Make a respective of what who, who does what, still, these labels uh, stick with men and women. So, you have uh, men performing, uh, men are seen as uh, providers, protectors, you know, and women are seen as uh, caregivers, nurturers, etc. etc. And then, access to opportunities, resources, institutions, and power men work outside, women work inside the house. So men have more access to you know access to opportunities. They have more resources because their work gets paid, and they have uh, they are the ones who run the institutions of power, whether it is religion, whether it is economic institutions. We have just seen that five percent of women own um, uh, are at the head of uh, uh, big businesses. Fourteen percent of women own land. So uh, you know, like men have more access, so more power. And um, women have less power, and so they have um, uh, less uh, self determination. So the gendered social order is based on main on and is main and uh, maintains these. So the whole social order works towards whether it is family, whether it is our uh, uh, legal system, whatever it is, it works on maintaining this kind of a uh, social order where there are definite clear gender roles and responsibilities and uh, um, power equations. So there is a lot of intersectionality because it is not that, um, you know, uh, what uh, men do, uh, I mean, uh, the way women behave in upper caste, upper class metro uh, scenario is very different from a woman who is in a rural area with the, who belongs to low caste and then who is a, 
uh, who's having uh, no education, who is very poor. So the power, if there is a lot of intersectionality, it is not that uh, we are all facing the same problem. No, we are not facing the same problems. Maybe I face one, two, three uh, problems as a woman, uh, but then there are uh, my maid may be facing more problems than I am facing. And similarly, the uh, the power equations are also different at different levels, and there is intersectionality of power equations. So a man who's uh, working for me may take my authority, but he will not take the authority of his wife uh, uh, in the in the house. So uh, it is very important that uh, we understand that you know uh, roles and responsibilities, qualities, attitudes, emotions, opportunities, resources, and uh, other things and gendered social. This is very important for us to understand. I'm not going into the details. I want to share what happened in a recent workshop. There I was uh, I was asking them and then the boys were very upset. They said, of course, we are also, we also face so many problems. I said, of course, I said that. It is not about women only. The behaviors, the, uh, the pressure of patriarchy, the pressure of uh, gender is so strong on women, they have on men, they have to provide, they have to protect, they have to be uh, strong all the time, which is a very big uh, uh, ask for, from anybody. And then um, they said, Hame jana padta hai airport ko, raat mein kisi ko lane ke liye. why can't women go? I said, yes, women should go. So we all should work to make sure that women drive the cars, women have access to vehicles, and then the environment is safe for a woman to drive alone in the night. So in the emancipation of women, there is the emancipation of man. Otherwise, he'll be stuck in the same position, in the same um, kind of a rut that he is in. So we really need to look at this as an interdependent and inter, uh, you know, where there is a lot of, um, uh, uh, I mean, both are very much related. And it is not just about women liberation. It is not just about men's liberation because the more you oppress women, the more stress will be on the man to do many things which he may not, and he will not be able to do many things that he wants to do because of the gender. So we need to really talk about these issues and um, particularly uh, behaviors, qualities. When you're making a film, I saw one film, social media post about some uh, baby product and it showed a girl uh, and the mother is applying cream and everything to the babe saying that her skin will be so soft, her skin will be so smooth, so glowing and she's only a girl. Why not take a boy in that situation? Because then it becomes uh, like, you know, anybody, any child needs, uh, uh, you know, good skin and uh, you need to protect her, protect it, uh, protect the child from um, any, I mean, uh, uh, child's skin. But then the tendency is to pick up a good looking girl and say, wrap the cream on her and say, she'll be very beautiful. She'll be very, uh, it will make her skin very soft and other things. So we have to look at the content that we are creating and see whether we are, you know, unconsciously without thinking, getting into that kind of a, uh, gender stereotyping. So that is very, very important. That means you have to step back and look at your creation, look at your content from a very, uh, from a gendered perspective. Then you would realize that, yes, I, I could have done it differently. Okay. And as regards roles and responsibilities also, do you always, I mean, uh, when I said I'm getting, uh, uh, I have got a nurse at home to uh, give uh, me, recently I was unwell, so to get uh, intravenous injections, everybody assumed that, the nurse is a woman. From where does she come? No one says it's a he. He comes from a nursing home. So we don't acknowledge women, men are nurses and male nurses. We don't recognize so many uh, uh, women, men in different kinds of jobs which are associated with uh, uh, women. Similarly, if a woman is a pilot or if she's a CEO or if she's uh, uh, you know the uh, you know in a in a position which is generally uh, associated with a man, we don't uh, generally think that there could be a woman in that position. So these are very important. And uh, yeah, we have to create a ecosystem system where we have access to education, uh, employment, property, uh, you know, and uh, institutions of power, access to, uh, you know, courts, uh, legal systems, access to police stations, access to uh, men, I mean, people in power. So 
legislators and other things. So once we have that access, increased access of women to those uh, um, uh, institutions of power, we'll have a better society. So broadly, this is what I'm, I'm not going into what is patriarchy, what is other things, but this is what I want you to remember that men and women are, uh, the expectations from them are different. They're defined socially very differently. And uh, we our expectations from them are different. And all this has actually causes inequalities, injustice, and violence. So we need to understand that men and women in similar situations have different experiences they have different um what you call uh, um, issues uh, um, that they confront so we need to understand that and we have to bring it into our communication in a very subtle and subliminal fashion so next puja ma'am i think someone has raised their hand latisha yeah do you want to ask a question uh, yes, actually, uh, you were talking about na, ki, um, uh, good looking influencers are there for the skincare products and all. So I just want to say that whenever we got the campaign, na, usme bhi literally a mention ho aata hai, we need good looking profiles for the particular products <laughs> and all. And mujhe hasi aati ho, ki, what do you mean by that? Yaar? It's really not in our hands. Like uh, the way we look is the way we look actually. And the God has given us that thing. So this was the point when you're talking about See, the, the thing is, up. yeah, the thing is that good looking is defined in, you know, somebody who's zero size, fair, with long right. hair, <laughs> kind of thing. But somebody who's dark, who's, uh, you know, uh, even uh, in plump or whatever it is, uh, not the zero size, they can still be beautiful because beauty is something which is uh, which comes out of personality, right? Right. right. Our, uh, our uh, we are not willing to accept that as beauty. And if you see that definition of beauty, none of us will fall into that category. Mm -hmm. Hard to do. But the thing is, the, uh, the, uh, my daughter is just five years old, but I don't know where uh, like she uh, learned this, ki jo brown color ke hote hai, they're not good and jo white color ke hote hai, they're good. But look, uh, because I am not the one who is teaching her all the things. So from where the things are coming in her mind, I don't know. Yeah, from so, where, you're, you know, you're constantly seeing only that kind of woman in your advertisements, in your films and everywhere, right? right. So it's so really like... hurting that my daughter is not learning She's still learning from, I don't know where she is learning all that. That is and... where your role comes as an influencer, madam. True, true, true. I am totally <laughs> making her understanding that color doesn't matter at all. It's really not a big deal in life or... For anything, it's not a big deal. Why right? why so, it is harmful is it's not just defining somebody in a particular way, but it causes so much of body, you know, uh, body issues, uh, about true, body image true. issues. And it also causes the lack of confidence. It causes so many issues for the girls who are, do not fall into that particular bracket. Okay, well, that particular image. So that is why when you are making content, when you are talking about something, you should be able to just in a very innocuous way put a message that it's not necessary to be beautiful in that sense or when right. you have the power to select somebody for your reel or for your story you should be able to pick up people who do not fall into that particular uh, things so uh, let's talk about because we said we want to change social norms so social norms are you know they're acceptable behavior shared standards acceptable behavior like women should not laugh loudly women should dress up properly women should not answer back to men you know these are all uh, kinds of um, you know member uh, thing and they can be codified into rules or laws <coughs> whatever it is so it is a socially constructed expectation unlike ideas attitudes and values which can be individual individual so this is something which we really need to understand that you know what is it that is socially approved behavior and that behavior sometimes is not really the correct behavior or the behavior that is empowering to the people so we need to change those norms okay next next put so uh, i just want to uh, share i was i was really shocked to see this yesterday and uh, I realized that there are eight crore social media influencers in India. I was like, I, my eyes popped up when I saw that. 
and uh, their following ranges from 100 to 1000 to 10 million. Uh, and it is a growing market because now more and more corporates are investing in social media influencers to reach out to a larger um, number of people, uh, you know, with uh, greater impact. And um, so Stephen King has said, we never know which lives we influence, when and why. So we should be very conscious that what we do has an impact on somebody. Somebody is watching, somebody is getting inspired or somebody is getting you know, is influenced in a particular way. So particularly because you're shouldering the identity or the being an influencer, I think you have to be much, much more conscious of what you're conveying and how you're conveying. Next. So let's look at some stereotypical content, okay? I'm sitting here by myself Talking to my shadows mm -hmm. Nine out of ten women Deserve a little more appreciation The loneliness The solitude The pieces of a missing puzzle Nine out of ten women Need a little more care The fields and the dreamy castles The breaks of love And the shades of youth The frames of eternal past Don't let grey hair steal the attention You deserve Introducing Arba Herbal Black Henna with nine essential herbs, including Nelly, Gotikola, and Aloe Vera, that colors, nourishes, and cares for your hair. Nine herbs that give you 10 out of 10. So, what do you think about this ad? Hello? No reactions to this side? I really feel this is quite stereotypical. Like how easily has the blame of whatever this woman is facing been put on the hair color? Like, hmm. come on, what era are we living in? So I, I, yeah. I came across a story. Somebody had spoken to me, one of my clients, wherein she shared that uh, she felt that her husband was showing infidelity. And the advice she got from the mother-in-law was that, oh my God, you're not dressing up well for him. So mm. this is the problem we have in the society. Like conveniently, we put it on how we look to something like this. Yeah. All the relationships, all the love, etc. is uh, zeroed down to her gray hair. You know, like it's her looks or her hair of all the things which matters to the man. So, yeah. Next. So it's a very, it's a stereotypical that you should always look nice to the man to maintain the relationship. So the onus of maintaining a relationship or sustaining a relationship is on the woman. Okay. Next. comments on this hello no comments on this ad i have something to say again i talk a lot about this topic wherein women are supposed to be superheroes uh it's very difficult to get 
uh, respect from the society. So a woman who is a multitasker is able to do hundreds of things together. She will get respect from the society. But the moment she lacks in one of the aspects, uh, she's struggling. So this is something that is uh, really wrong. They expected uh, the world around expects us to be superheroes, which is just not possible, and it's so wrong. And it puts so much of pressure on the women, Absolutely. and then leads to so much of low self-image, self-respect, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, because you are not able to live up to the expectations of the society. Okay, next yes. one, Pooja. I'll sh I'll show you some ads which you know in thirty seconds they have given a great message. So we'll we'll see the ads, and then you can give your comments. <laughs> क्या बात है गुरदीप पाजी हैं बड़े जोर शोर से बिक रही है आपकी मिठाइया है ये तो सब बच्चों की मेहनत है जी <laughs> वो इंटरनेट नहीं होता इंटरनेट हाँ 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 उस पर डाल दिया बिजनेस को बस बड़े होनार हो गए आपके बेटे बेटे नहीं जी बेटिया शू गुरदीप सिंह एंड डॉटर्स चंगा है कामयाबी ना लड़का देखती है ना लड़की कामयाबी सिर्फ सोच देखती है स्टार प्लस नई सोच इफ यू डोंट वांट टू टॉक यू कैन पुट ऑन द चैट व्हाट यू थिंक अबाउट द हैट्स ओके राइट यू लाइक इट इट्स ग्रेट इट्स गुड और व्हाट यू थिंक अबाउट इट Please put yeah. it in the chat. Okay, uh, ma'am. I want to uh, say it's an amazing ad. And आज के जमाने में जितना लड़के नहीं कर सकते उतना लड़कियां कर रही है. और ये ये ad देख के I feel all the parents they should be proud of their daughter. और ऐसे ही अपने daughters को आगे बढ़ाना चाहिए. That's what I feel. Because even girls they deserve a chance. और yeah. कई जगहों पे अपने बेटियों को आगे बढ़ाते हैं लड़कियों को बहुत ही पीछे रखते हैं आई थिंक सो दैट्स रॉन्ग एंड दिस एड फॉर मी इट्स एक्सलेंट एड ओके थैंक यू नेक्स्ट I just want to say too, uh, I don't think so कि पहले के जमाने में औरतें कुछ कर नहीं सकती थी इट वॉज जस्ट की वो कर बहुत कुछ सकती थी बट उन्हें ना मौका नहीं दिया गया कभी भी कुछ करने का बट नाउ इट्स द चेंज की सब लोग अडेप्ट कर रहे हैं सब नहीं कर रहे तो एटलीस्ट फोर्टी परसेंट पीपल आर अडेप्टिंग की येस गर्ल्स कैन डू एनी थिंग एंड गर्ल्स आर द लाइक पावर टू डू एनी थिंग और कैन टेक बिकॉज मैंने भी लेटेस्ट हाँ बिकॉज मैंने भी लेटेस्ट मूवी देखी थी वो रणवीर सिंह की और आलिया की जिसमें वो लड्डू का बिजनेस होता है नॉल और आलिया जब वो मार्केटिंग हेडलाइन देती है जो भी देती है तो उसकी मदर इन लॉ चिड़ जाती है बहुत ज्यादा कि हाउ शी कैन डू दैट बिकॉज उस मूवी में वो दोनों चीज दिखाई गई थी कि लेडी ही है जो चला रही है बट वो मूवी रॉकी एंड रानी आई थिंक ओके Uh, उसमें ये दिखाया गया था कि uh, मतलब दोनों चीज थी कि एक औरत पूरी फैमिली भी संभाल रही है बिजनेस की हेल्प भी बनी हुई है बट वो एक्सेप्ट नहीं कर रही है कि उसकी बहू बीच में इन्वॉल्व हो रही है तो दैट वाज आल्सो अ गुड थिंग कि उन्होंने वो दिखाया उस मूवी में तो दिस इज एड इज ऑल्सो अ गुड एग्जाम्पल की वी शुड स्टार्ट अडेप्टिंग ऑल द चेंजेस एंड वी शुड स्टार्ट इट फ्रॉम हर सोन या गुड थैंक यू सो मच नेक्स्ट make the complete man being there is just one of them raymond the complete man yes any comments 
Yes, for sure on this too. As I can see, my husband is just in this man. <laughs> my husband is totally my support because I am having two year or two months old daughter, and he is my absolute support to handle her. Even my need, we, I mean, they say that like new moms don't need me. I don't have any party with that. Because at night, he is also there with me. He is always 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 there with me. the uh, tendency is to say that oh it is a, a general norm the social norm is it is a woman's responsibility to take care of the child so this ad in a very simple way shows that a man can also take care of a child and true, uh, true, you true. know it is and it is just a very sensitive nice story told in a nice way so it doesn't really you know it's not a revolutionary kind of a thing but in how a little empathy how a little understanding and sensitivity can make a difference right मेरे जैसी कितनी लड़कियां कितना परेशान होती है की अकेले बच्चे को संभाल के आई कैन फील देम आई कैन लाइक एज्यूम उनके ऊपर कितना मेंटल स्ट्रेस होता होगा और कितना प्रेशर होता होगा बट नाइस इज नाइस Yeah. Yeah. Next one, Pooja. Ah, so soft, Idli. Hey, no chutney. Amma, yada gaya. Amma hota to minimum three types chutney milta. Parvala. Nariyal, onion, pudina, dhania. Twenty-five types of chutney. बनाओ चटनी पत्नी हैवल्स अप्लायंसेस रिस्पेक्ट वुमेन तो हाउ मेनी पीपल लाइक दिस एड नोबडी लाइक्स इट पुट इट इन द चैट इफ यू लाइक इट I'm surprised that you didn't find this ad. I I I'm having a doubt now. Did you all open the computer and go away somewhere? How come there's no response? okay now there are people commenting on it so how a woman's work is undermined ha huh? she makes nice idli sambar and he says i my mother would have made three chutneys and the way she responds to it is really very funny at at the same time very very uh, what you call uh, quite powerful communication so let's see the next one guess what <laughs> Oh wow. Ah. Lao, mai kar deta hu. Lao, mai kar deta hu. Beta dhyan se. Lao, mai kar deta hu. मैं कर देता हूं नहीं आई गॉट दिस अब मैं खुद कर Yep. 
Next one. See, the thing is, technology is always seen as a man's, uh, you know, field. And even at home, you know, small, small things also. Uh, we leave it to men and then uh, they are the ones who handle all the technology. But the fact is that there are some men who are totally technologically challenged and there are women who are very good at technology. But we don't, because of the social norms, we don't give them the opportunity to, you know, explore or to be self-sufficient. Yeah, next. Mm, a biker boy. New bike. Mm? Is it? It's nice. Single seater. Hai. So, you will take a lift to the house? What is this? 1000 cc. How is it? How is it? 4 seconds. 0 to 100. So, when you talk to the bikers, you will not be able to do it. You will not be able to do it. You will not be able to do it. You will not How many times have you experienced this kind of a thing? You know, I used to drive and then whenever anything happens and they say, ah, nahi aaya to chalate kyo hai, which they will never dare to say anybody to a man. But you know, when a woman is driving, everybody is very cautious uh, on the road and uh, they're ready to, you know, run her down even for a small mistake. Did you ever face any of you? Uh, yes, mind. whenever I drive car, I face like sometimes if I'm wrong, then uh, you know, most of the guys they say, Kare ladki hai, chalana thodi na aata hai. So, this hmm. kind of a thing I've faced myself. Yeah. So, by this side, you know, it, it, it's very, very in a humorous way in 30 seconds, it tells you, you know, that you know, women also can drive and they, you know, and they have knowledge of the vehicles and other things you know so it is very nicely put in a very short um, duration so it is uh, when we are talking of communication when you're talking of technology you know show more women talk about women and technology or driving ke bare mein baat kare, life skills ke bare mein, life uh, uh, coaches yeah whatever you're talking about things then talk about these things also these are all very very important that you know women should not hesitate to drive uh, vehicles and uh, because driving vehicles means mobility it takes you you know freedom and so many things of course public transport is there but the fact is that you having your own vehicle driving is uh, so much more empowering okay so try to put in these messages into your communication next How do you like this ad? Put it in the chat, please. Somebody says, even I always take help of my teenage doctor. Yes. Only two people have commented. So it's just, it's an old ad which is uh, remade, reversing the roles. You know, it is uh, the, the boy, the girl comes running onto the field, whereas here it is a boy who comes running onto the field. Because, uh, you know, it is, it, it, it's just, you know, I see so many reels where you redo it or re- um, change something and uh, make it funny or make it interesting so you can do something like this to the reels also to show women in a more positive way or men in a different in a more sensitive way so uh, 
I the reason why I included this ad is because of that because reels have so much. Uh, you you all post so many reels and other things, so you can uh, tweak some old material which is very very gendered and then make it uh, re uh, imagine it and then make it into something which is very gender sensitive. Okay, okay. Next. I wanted to end, uh, I mean, I love this advertisement. I love the way it is done and then it's very, very uh, beautiful. You can take off the screen sharing. You can stop screen sharing. So, uh, see, a lot is possible when you're, com when you're in the communication sphere. You can do so much and uh, so well. If your heart is in the right place and if, uh, if you are uh, thinking the right way, you can make a big, big difference. And uh, and I feel that uh, even if you have impacted a few lives, it makes our life more meaningful than being very self-centered and you know being very uh, happy in our own this thing, but not really making a difference to anybody. So I uh, request all of you to, the reason why I showed, uh, uh, I showed the, I was surprised to see my name here, Sharda here. Okay. I was surprised to, uh, I mean, uh, it's very important that we, um, uh, you know, um, do our bit because we are influencers, because we are communicators to create some awareness, to create, bring in some change in the way, in the Gise Pitejo ideas, hai, thinking, hai. Usme kuch to kuch परिवर्तन लाने के लिए हमें थोड़ा बहुत काम करना बहुत जरूरी है and uh, now we have uh, we'll break into breakup rooms and i want all of you
to each group to discuss how you can build what are the opportunities for you to build gender communication in your communication and what are the major challenges so if you can identify three opportunities and three challenges that will be very good so is it very clear we'll break into rooms and then the group will discuss what is uh, what are the opportunities that are available to you as media, uh, social media influencers to come up uh, to address these kinds of issues in your communication and what are the four, three challenges that you are likely to face okay so puja would you please uh, break them into rooms uh, open the break up rooms Uh, how many rooms, ma'am? Four rooms? Or eight rooms? No, eight rooms. Uh, even the uh, Population First team and uh, UNFPA team, I request you to be... Um, to participate in the discussion so that you can guide the discussion also and get some insights. Sharda, you may, uh, we may just want to put the two questions in the chat so that everyone can see them when they go into the breakup rooms. Okay. Uh, Pooja, could you please write the two questions because I'm not able to see, I'm not wearing my face. What are the opportunities to available to them to address these issues in their communications? What are the three challenges that they are likely to face in doing it? Ma'am, oh, one second. PC is not. Sorry? I'm doing it, uh, Pooja. Uh -huh. Okay. Sorry, I'm no, I'm not wearing specs. I can't see it. The font is very small. Anybody would like to share your views on it? On the session so far? Or you want to put it on the chat? Puja, is it happening or no? Puja? Ma'am, one minute. There are a few people who haven't joined the session. Yeah, they have to accept to 
join the room. They will get a pop-up. Yeah. All of you, please accept the uh, invitation to join the group. Hi, Ashwini. Welcome. Uh, if it's not happening, then let's not waste time. Pooja? Yes, ma'am. We've closed all the rooms. So where are we? Oh, so many people are without the rooms. Who are the people on the room? Uh, uh, I'm not in any room. So a lot of people didn't accept the join room invitation. So send it I again. Or otherwise, let's have a uh, plenary. Prajot Kaur says she's the only one in her group. No, we closed the breakout. So close the groups if it is not working. You have to accept the invitation to join the group. Otherwise, it will not work. All the participants. There's nothing to fear. We are not going to do anything. You just have to go and discuss between 10 of you. Hello? Hello? Why people are not accepting? Maybe they are not there in front of the computer. I have my own doubts. Uh, maybe you should just have an open discussion, Sharda, because they're very... That's what I'm people. saying. That's what I said plenary will have. Yeah. Uh -huh. So any comments? Uh, uh, what, what do you think? Is it possible for you to include any gender uh, in a, whatever we have uh, discussed so far in your communication? Yatesh? Yeah, so I would like to say something. Hmm. Yeah, so it's possible, but basically what happens is this kind of serious content does not work in reels. So when you put like something funny or something, it gets more likes. But when you put something serious, uh, it will have a like very less viewership. So that's the major problem. Apart from that, obviously we have many uh, venues to uh, like put across our uh, whatever information you want to put. Like for example, we can do it by reels, by posts, or by stories. We can uh, create polls as well, but. Uh, and I have also seen this. Whenever you try to put something serious, it does not get very appreciated, and people do not have a very positive uh, impact on it. Basically, they don't like it; they just swipe it up. Yeah, so that because is the you know, uh, yeah. For uh, I have observed one thing: social media is a feel-good media. Like you want to feel good, watch something, feel nice about it, buy something, watch. But the thing is that the reason why I showed these ads is. None of them is really boring or anything. The C A tad you see, it is so funny. Like you feel like watching it again and again just for the expression on the man's face. You know, it is yes, the yes. ads which I have shown are very good. Even the Cadbury ad. So you can do it. It's not that you cannot do it, right? It is, uh, it's just, it requires more creativity on your part. And then I always insist that gender communication need not be boring, very uh, you know, like uh, you can have, I mean, you can communicate in so many innovative ways. And if you are willing, we can work on the communication together also. Okay. Sure. Anybody else? Prajot? Ma'am, uh, it's been 11 years since I have been sharing about gender stereotypes and how I have personally broken them. I see my kids breaking them every day, my husband. And I have realized that people are receptive of it. It's not that I've ever faced uh, an issue that, you know, uh, like like any sort of a negativity from the society because these are the things that people want to hear, but there's nobody talking about it. That's what I felt. I used to write blogs about it. I still write. I make videos. This car wala thing that you shared, I shared a very funny sort of a video just recently wherein I said that 
you know there are a lot of egos that i hurt on the way when i'm driving on the highway and because i wanted to put it across that you know it's okay if people are getting hurt if their egos are getting hurt you don't stop driving just because you don't dull your shine because people can't handle it so i personally feel there is a lot of scope and to be honest you have to go beyond the reach the likes and other factors that kitne log because i realize that over the years there only those people who believe in what i believe in follow me so this mm. is what happens gradually you don't have to go by the numbers matlab because that's not the main agenda if we are here for the main agenda that is numbers then of course this is something that you to think about ki kitna bolna aur kitna nahi bolna but for me personally it's become my everyday task ki acha aaj kya mudda uthaye it, it is always work yeah. do yes i do agree there are people who do not agree with certain points or unki hurt hoti hai go and they write a comment spam and all that which is okay that's what comes part of along life, right part of your yeah, job absolutely yeah. yeah the thing is that um, uh, yeah it's very important uh, that uh, we have to make the communication interesting entertaining and uh, uh, i will be the last person to say make some drab the uninteresting boring thing and put i won't read it so i can assure you that so i need some we can use the already existing content from various places tag i mean share that content with some funny comment on it and you can take pot shots at people and you know like you can make it very uh, uh, very exciting the whole engagement can be quite exciting if you are creative so we have now two very very creative people with us nashkar and sridhar garu and uh, aishwarya both of them are here and uh, uh, gokul is there i can't see him scooter uh, i saw Ash- ashwini sorry i called her ashwini yeah, right ashwini and uh, is right here yeah go so over to the three of you yeah pooja is it possible to have three of them together yes no ma'am. yeah and you can take out all the other videos ஆச்சாரா <laughs> <laughs> so we we have here with us an accomplished creative veteran uh, an accomplished advertising person turned filmmaker and uh, i guess the the intent behind this session as i have been brief is to learn from your expertise and for you to reflect on how influencers can be in messages on gender in their communication briefly put now influencers are a, a very different breed the the we used to be influencers at one point in time filmmakers editors advertising creative directors we used to be influencers at one point in time we still are but uh, there are these hundreds and thousands of creators sitting all around us who can uh, they have an influence on even our influential work so they in a sense are far more powerful than some of us uh and but then the intent as i said is for them to be able to learn from your experience on how they can weave in messages and gender in communication let's start with the uh, ashwini also known as aishwarya on how to choose themes for stories and vlogs which could be entertaining yet can be a message given the duration challenges that many of them have uh, attention challenges that consumers have so what could, what could be the themes of stories and blogs that could allow for such sensitive messaging ashwin uh i do feel that uh, the first thing i think all of us have to be very mindful every time we're putting a post out and i'm not purely talking about the advertising thing because we have a lot of influencers here and uh, instagram being the main uh, tool of communication for a lot of uh, uh influences and youtube and facebook if i may say so uh i do feel that the voice of reasoning and why we are saying certain things about uh, uh about women uh 
and how do we showcase that is very very important so to be very mindful about the kind of words we use uh, uh i am a big uh, a fan of positive imagery so even though i state a problem in terms of uh, that that i need to educate a girl child but at the same time i will show a hope um uh, there rather than making it very morose or making it very documentarish or make showing the stating the problem and then asking now how could this be solved i would rather state the problem but then show a brighter side to it and show uh, show a positive side to it so that uh, uh, the world is full of problems and uh, we uh, predominantly as a nation uh, want to encourage women more and more in into the into various spectrums and various uh, fields of uh, where we are and it will be always nice to just have like you know uh, see the goodness in everything and start celebrating that uh the moment i feel that uh, influences state a problem and then go um go on and on about it just stating the problem and not finding a, a solution to it is where uh, uh, i understand that that starts a lot of debate and that also has a lot of uh, uh, clickbaits but from that it's also very important to show the brighter side so uh, that's where i would uh, have always my starting point and also i think it is very important to be real uh to be very focused on the realism of uh, of how we are representing women um of various uh, of various uh, communities and of various uh, uh social strata of society uh, how do we represent them and how mindful we are in in elevating and celebrating them is what i would always want to see wonderful wonderful opening remarks keeping it positive don't just point at the problems keeping it real uh, look at solutions and uh, authenticity i think is something many people have spoken about uh, talking about positives uh, shridhar sir the opening remarks that i would request you to make are actually very relevant to influencers when you come have to create very short form content so how do advertising professionals manage to keep it so beautiful and so uh, you know yet so hard hitting in 30 seconds or 60 seconds what is the magic to it and what can influencers take from that the yeah, I, i believe it does not matter the length um, of the content which you create you know it could just be a single frame you know when we started communicating with people we used to get you know one print ad one picture to communicate everything so one frame you know we are not talking about a second you know second will have 24 25 you know whatever it may be today but what goes behind your thinking um, the first thing which i uh, need to tell all the young influencers is we are more powerful than governments we are more powerful than the richest people in the world because as communicators as creators as influencers we have the power to change the way people think and behave if only we were to discover the true power uh, of of uh, our content you know what we uh, speak to people and how it can change um, uh, the entire world so if we were to understand that power um, then comes in the responsibility correct if you understand the power for so many years you know you probably your generation may not have seen it must have heard at one point in time india was a burden to the world in 1970 you know i remember vividly and wrote an article about that in my my um, college magazine time magazine has put uh, a sack full of grains and then had millions of rats rodents coming in and then eating that 
and then it says this is what India is going to do to the world. There will not be enough grains if Indians were to be fed. You know, there's so many at that time. We are not 1.6 million people. We are hardly you know, 300 to 400 million people. So the power of those images, you know, that image of Time magazine, we took many years, many years to really, um, really, you know, uh, erase that image in the minds of people. Till 1990, that's the image of India in the in the eyes of the world. One image, one image published by one magazine, has uh, ruined 40 years um, of struggle you know, for us to find a place. So it is all about the images, the, the communication, and then what we do. You know, another thing I talked uh, much more closer home, not Time Magazine did, what Government of India did, you know, population was a huge burden to us. But So they said we need to cut down on population before even Sanjay Gandhi did his whatever, you know, forcible acts. The government believed before that um, all the family advertising, family planning advertising used to be uh, a husband and wife with a huge basket on their head. In the basket, there used to be children, four or five little babies and children. So that was the image, you know, which was portrayed post-independent uh, India. From there, uh, during Indira Gandhi's time in, uh, uh, in mid-60s to late, uh, I mean, uh, mid-70s to late 80s, Hamzo Hamare Do. Then we had this one man and his wife, and then two children, one boy, one girl. It did tremendously um, for the country to really cut down on, uh, um, on, on the population, you know, birth control. Whether it was forcibly done or whether it was done because of the need or because of education, that's not the point, but it is. it has made a great impact on people. At the same time, today looking back and then looking at that, it also made a great negative impact on our society. Because that one still image, you know, for many years, you know, almost three decades now, we have been um, idealizing a family as a boy and a girl. So we are not allowing the second girl to live in a family. Ideally, everybody wants a boy and a girl. So knowingly and unknowingly, you know, whatever we say, it affects a generation of people, probably more than a generation of people, where these images, these words, and then the uh, little things which we create will have a deeper impact. First thing we need to understand that uh, that if you have 10 people following you, you are responsible for the 10 people whom you are influencing, 10, 100, million, 10 other. So you need to be a little more careful and then think 10 times before you post anything. Once you post, you can't take it back. So that is one thing which, which I urge people that does not matter what is the length and what is the format, where you are posting, how you are posting, whether it is personal in nature, whether it is you know, professional in nature, think, because what we do reflects who we are. You know, it is our culture, our thinking is what we are reflecting in every comment which we make, every like and every share which we do. So it's a reflection of oneself. So look at, you know, if you are influencers, you are in a position to influence 10 people, 20 people, million people, 2 million people, or even just one more person in your life. So you need to think twice what you are advising, what you are asking them to do. So nobody sets out, you know, because I come from very commercial content, you know, which is commissioned by a client and a lot of money is involved on that. They put crores of money in, uh, in uh, actually um, supporting that piece of work. And so it is, you know, a lot of money involved and a lot of brands and everything. So when you are writing or creating a content, you know, you have white paper in front of you or you have a blank screen in front of you. What do I do? So what do I do? You know, your mind is capable of making billions of connections per second. 
we don't remember all that. We only remember when you actually pen down, you know, maybe five, three, uh, in whatever thought process, you know, two minutes, three minutes or five minutes, which you are thinking about it. And out of which you pick one and then do it. And if you are not satisfied, you go on to think a little more time and then put it down. When you are putting it down and then say that this is what I want to pursue doing it, take a half a step back and then say that is this what I wanted to share as my view, my personality and uh, the message which I want to do. You don't have to go um, like an activist saying that, you know, I'll embrace this and, and I'll be like an activist and uh, only activists, you know, can as Ashwini was saying, you know, it's true. Act activists will raise the problem. They will not give a solution. As content creators, as creative people, we can find a solution. What do you want people to think and then feel after seeing my content? What is the response which we seek from them? If you were to think about that, I want people to say that, you know, I never thought there are two commercials which uh, um, pieces of work which uh, um, uh, which uh, um, uh, uh, these guys have shared with me before the Google has shared. I think Google has shared those two. You can cast a boy, you can cast a girl, you can cast uh, cast somebody, you know, um, uh, a different gender. Um, so you can, you know, make a choice when you when you have a story, and then you say that, you know, how do I tell the story? Whose perspective I want to tell the story. The first thing is more different story which you tell, more people will be interested in doing that. So that's the first point. You know, it won't be boring and engaging because you are doing something different. Uh, so that itself will get you whatever you want, your primary objective of getting the attention of people. Having got the attention of people, what is the story which you wanted to weave? And what is that which you wanted to communicate? What is the response which you want? So communication is all about uh, all about uh, after you see um, a picture, an ad, a post, anything. If anything is left in your head, you know that's the reason why communication is art of uh, pursuing things. And how persuasive your message is, it should linger in your head for a little more time. It should make you discomfortable whenever you think about that. Because somebody has triggered something in my head. Unless I do something about it, I should not be um, at rest. So, you know, all these are the triggers which we can imagine, you know, when you are making a choice. I want to post this. I want to not post it. I want to correct this. I do not want to correct this. I want to touch this subject. I don't want to touch this subject. Even if I had done this, what way I want to do it. You know, like Ashwini say, you know, you don't have to be serious about it. You don't have to take the voice of an activist, uh, correct? It can be lighthearted. It can be something, you know, it can just be a casting decision. Does not matter boy, girl, or somebody else. You know, what does it matter if, if you have got a scholarship, you have got a scholarship. If somebody is celebrating, throwing a party, it could be a boy, it could be a girl, it could be somebody, you know, um, uh, is something else. It really does not matter who's doing that, correct? It is most important is to really bring in, you know, that uh, uh, that emotion which you wanted to create. So I will only say, it, you know, I mean, length does not matter. What really matters is your maturity, your sensitivity, your value system. And then what do you want to communicate? And then influencing does not mean number of people follow you. It is not number of people like your content. Number of people remember your content and act upon that. How much of mind space you can occupy in their head and how much change you can make it happen in their behavior. That's the greatest power. Even Bill Gates does not have it. Adani, Ambani do not have it. You and I are gifted with that to understand human behavior and make an alternation. Alter, alteration in that behavior. That's the power the creators have got. It takes, you know, one film, one film, you know, one feature film to trigger many people. Why not the housewife go and then pursue her career once that uh, five years or eight years of uh, motherhood, you know, where you have the responsibility of a child. 
you know, Panga is all about that. Because that, the, the uh, story is, you know, one, the story itself is very interesting. Out of that, and then you start asking a question, why not? Isn't it nice somebody to go and uh, achieve? So you can, you know, all those will come out of your own thinking, your personality, your value system. Nobody can enforce or uh, tell you about it. So I don't see any difference between a static Instagram post versus say um, 13 one hour episodes, you know, 13 hours of you know content you produce for OTT. There's no difference. It is all the writer and uh, when you are writing it, you have certain things in your head and then you want to cast certain people, uh, make their character, their, your characters behave in certain way. They should have certain values and do not have certain values and what is the takeaway which you want from people. So each character, you know, can be uh, different and then you can do whatever you want to do. First, it's more internal thinking. Then you can put out the content. Just think. 10 seconds, 5 seconds. I know we are living in a, in a, in a live world. We just wanted to respond immediately. And then when you are responding, just give that, you know, read again. As we used to do in old days before sending anything, read, read it for grammatic errors. Now nobody bothers about grammatic errors. But, you know, just look at your content again and then post it. That's the only thing which I say is the difference and what needs to be done. Sorry, I took time because I have to say it. So, Professor, I think you've spoken like a, a, a seasoned admin, although you, you, the point on the duration doesn't matter, the format doesn't matter, those are perfectly valid points. The intent matters. Uh, you also mentioned that uh, with the power of even 10 influencers gives you the responsibility to those 10 influencers on what you say. So whether it is 10 or 10,000. And uh, live advertising, if I may, uh, be clear about what you're saying and the action that you want to trigger in your followers or the people reading that message. And what is the message that you're leaving with them, which, uh, which remains with them after your engagement is done. So a lot of commonalities between advertising feature films and influencer content after all this is content so coming to uh, what what according to you is the influence of popular culture how much of the change that we see in cinema in advertising uh, with respect to gender we see a lot of wonderful themes being discussed uh, how much of it is populated to, do you think into the influencer space this question is let's start with Ashwini and what, what kind of influence do you think popular culture has on the influencer content that gets created? I think the most, uh, and I do not know how many people would agree with me, but the most most popular influence in uh, a thing which actually is in, influenced by influences to the common people is fashion. Uh, and I think that's very important also is because um, including my mother who would be watching Instagram and going through Facebook and everything and would see, um, you know, uh, one influencer who has like put a beautiful sari and has some oxidized bangles and earrings and everything. And that really uh, makes her also want to go maybe buy or uh, of course influencers uh, also uh, do a lot of branding and sometimes they're really good ones also so I feel that to uh, to enjoy this culture of what has been happening for centuries in our country or uh, as India uh, is very important to uh, to rejoice what we have uh, very beautifully put is uh, our uh, our textiles and our fashion of what we instead of aping the West, we are actually uh, thanks to the influencers, they are actually getting more and more Indian and making uh, Indian uh, Indian clothes fashionable. So the one thing which is definitely fashionable and is fully influenced is fashion, which I feel. Uh, the second thing which comes in is uh, uh, is about uh, I I saw some influencers who were talking about career aspects and uh, how you can you know be uh, be good in your communication uh, those things are very important is because it's just not about uh, it's just not about studying now it's also about uh, 
how you present yourself and how you are and uh, this is mostly uh, catering to a lot of um, for me a small town india is the future of india and for me uh, every every woman from from every corner of this country uh, uh, from from small town india is who are the ones who who are progressive are the ones who are the dreamers and to influence them and to make them confident enough to to uh, to face this world uh, uh, will be very nice when i see influencers who are promoting more of more of that for, for me the greatest influencers were uh, the uh, were the uh, were the stay at home women who were cooking from home and making youtube videos and i think during covid they were the ones whom i was and everyone was watching the most so if they could do it uh, and their cookery uh, cookery shows are seen uh, that uh, makes them also a great influencer so cookery show people love watching um, women cooking and you know having this and there are various methods in which it's happening so that is something again which is uh, a great influence and of course you you have uh, you have a conversation starters you have uh communication about women about uh, about strength about uh, about their psychology um which 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 is which is a part and parcel but i would really urge all influencers to really be as indian as they can and to like really uh wear wear this young india on their sleeves to 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 just be real and to just be themselves um so it is okay to not have a pasta but it is okay to have sabji roti and and still feel very great about it after an exam so you know that that's where i would come from so so if i can just add to the question maybe i wasn't clear so we take out from what you're saying fashion is huge food is huge the greatest influences and the future of india being small town and uh, those homemakers who did those food videos tells us a lot about what kind of content gets consumed and whom we want to celebrate. Yeah, that's so, that. Um, uh, that's uh, consumed by all age groups. So even a sixteen-year-old right. woman is watching it, and uh, a sixteen-year-old girl is watching it. So sure. I think that is what is important. Right. No. So my my original question was uh, maybe I didn't word it correctly was. Do you see influence of popular culture from cinema, from advertising, etc., uh, having an influence on the content created by influencers? Yes, uh, I do feel that happens is because uh, what we create as storytellers, whether it is in advertising, we usually uh, tell stories according to the changing insights of human behavior and consumer insights for a brand. And it's very important that the more and more uh, we focus on uh, encouraging women as characters in our storytelling, um, it uh, just starts influencing this because cinema does influence uh, everyone around us, including influencers. So it is really nice. Uh, I like to see influencers dissecting a character from from the 1980s and then to in 2003 and talking about why this this character as a woman said this or what what was there what was her uh, impact or how did the man uh, create an impact on the woman so there are these discussions which are happening and i think those are great discussions is because uh, storytellers have like pop said have have the uh, uh, we have the baton to, you know, change thinking. We can create uh, more storytellers in their own way, in their own thinking. And it does impact uh, some person somewhere. Sure. So, for example, yeah. when I made Panga, there was a lot of men who called me and told me, I'm not going to share this, I'm going to take my wife for this film because she's going to, like, really, boy balance se mujhe maare. So right. it is important for those kind of things also to happen. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Sridhar, sir, do you want to add to that on the influence of popular culture on influencer content? Of course, there will always be, you know, if you take each era has its own influence, you know, 
on everything you know you take uh, movies magazines politics you know uh, cinema theater uh, film songs you know each era you know has has its own very distinct and you know, every 12 years one generation changes and if you cu- curate the stuff every 12 years you see quite a lot of difference because uh, your own mind your perception the way you are living you are surrounded by something you know in 70s you know i remember that when we were coming out from uh, uh, from teenage to the real world you know the problem is jobs you know there is no no job you know you get a government job or uh, you don't there is not uh, too many things which we were to look at and then we our influences those days were political leaders and socialism communism i almost joined naxalites uh, because of the socialistic nature of the society which pushes you you know all the angry uh, students that we don't have a future and then we need to make a future we need to change something so politically socially culturally religiously uh, economically there are a lot of influences on us as individuals the way we grow up the way we consume uh, news the way we consume entertainment the way you know it's all up bringing friends together and then we start evolving every day and then that is when each one is a reflection of another you see uh, in 17s the paintings of mf hussein is a reflection of angry young man uh, amitabh bachchan and then the political emergency and then the political upheaval which is happening the cuban war which is which was happening so uh, everything will have you know the poets were more rebellious at time so everything you know has its own um, way today also you know it's, it's the same thing you know but thank god uh, that this generation has you know last 10 years i have seen far more positive content in the public spaces uh, before that you know 10 15 years back you know we did not have so much of video content Uh, people used to put a facebook post not if not a video people were shy of uh, leaving a phone message also you don't want to talk to a dead phone and uh, voice was nothing you know absolutely nothing so today you see freely so thanks to tiktok which revolutionized um even at the rural uh, india also women men old people everybody together making tiktok videos so we are no more camera shy the moment you are no more camera shy you don't mind the content going public so you one you found the freedom and comfort with yourself to make a video second you are proud enough to put that in the public uh, forum correct so the comfort with ourselves has become you know far greater today than any other time okay otherwise you will only have achievers talking about how they were and then what they are doing so you will not have had you know common people coming in and putting their uh, their uh, experiences their opinions in the public space but at the same time you know uh, we also need to realize that this social media is a small bubble in a small uh, small um, world of uh, mini metros and metros uh, okay. so there is a larger section of india um, almost 80% of india which is connected still with television and uh, um, and uh, feature films so the impact of feature film and then television content is very high and then you see far more progressive um, content in feature films or the ott urban films you know both have created the the huge content but the films which are influencing the larger population of the of the country are still or the television soaps which are which are actually influencing a larger section of indian uh, uh, audiences are still untouched unchanged you know when we started this journey uh, of um, maybe you know 15 20 years back one of the things which uh, which i have taken 
uh, mandate in advertising to change a boy to girl. Ashwini is very much, you know, part of that. And we're able to so today see much more sensitive advertising about uh, about girls. Even I used to fight with the boys in the agency also, you know, don't go and then play cricket. Then what will happen to the girls who don't play cricket? Correct. You, you can't go and then sit in a Madhira, Madhira bar and then drink and brainstorm about work. You are not including the other teams. So, you know, if you were to be sensitive um, and then you can make things in a workplace, uh, things are changing. A lot of things here are changing, but television, feature films, you know, able to go and then meet all the people whom I knew and able to convince them that, you know, just characterize them. You know, don't show a woman only for serving tea and coffee. Let her do something which is more than, you know, let her participate in a debate or discussion or a family decision making. That will have a deeper impact than, you know, making her as a heroine and then do a Jansi Lakshmi Bai film, which people are not willing to do. But within the family, how can you make her as part of the home discussions. Don't throw that, throw her away. You know? Take even whether you finally take a call based on her input or not, make her part of the family. That itself was a Hercules task to uh, to really speak to a lot of uh, screenwriters and uh, directors to include women in a sensitive way because it's a commercial field. Somebody is putting in money, their formulas, there are certain um, actors, actresses, they don't like doing, like doing. There are so many factors, but still we have overcome that. Today, I'm very proud that, you know, a lot more sensitive films are coming in uh, in the area. And where I'm completely disappointed was the television. I tried very hard, very hard with all the television channels and all the creative direct directors who were working um, at that point in time. This was around... Uh, 2008, 9, 10, you know, when, when the television um, war was there, you know, colors to a lot of new channels came in and everybody was fighting on that uh, prime time, soap time. So that time, you know, we tried even cutting progressive, uh, um, a progressive promo videos uh, because one of the things which I believe is is even if you wait to have a progressive portrayal on a promo video, it will influence people because a lot of people, including men, see the see the promos, not the actual show. Correct. So we tried all kinds of things, unable to make a dent. And today, also, I'm very sad that there's only area where we are not progressive enough um, in terms of portrayal of uh, of women and then the gender bias, you know, Ada Cup, Dood, Beta Kudena, Beti Kukuchne Milega, because she doesn't need any of that. You know, son needs energy and then he has to study. A lot of, you know, if you go to rural uh, India, you see all these kind of uh, discrepancies and then the bias towards that. Only way those can be changed is through mass mediums. Um, and uh, the, the, I don't know, you know, right now it is penetrating a little more. But you guys, you know, as influencers, you know, you know, and then you will get your own analytics, you know, from which part of the country your content is coming, I mean, your following is coming. And then if you were to aim that following and then try to create some content which can attract uh, uh, the people who are coming from smaller places, uh, then probably, you know, it will, you will also make little inroads and then you will also be able to create a positive impact on those smaller areas also where the impact is much lesser. Um, so, I mean, there is there is definitely what is happening around you has an impact on what you do and then the way your thinking is. And then we are part of that uh, already. And what we can do with your own conscience is whatever you are able to perceive and create ideology in your head, you try to pass it on and then influence for other people. So it is just influencing the influencers. You know, you'll have a lot of people who will become influencers, who themselves are influencers. It's a old saying, you know, if you educate a girl, you educated the entire family. Uh, correct. It's the same thing. You educate, you influence one person who can influence ten other people. It's a chain. Wonderful. Well put, sir. I think the point about television is uh, very, very relevant. But to give the devil its due, you see. Uh, right now, making colors, launching a show on an abandoned girl child and partnering with the Ministry of 
uh, child and women, whatever, women's and children's ministry, and, uh, you know, to promote their helpline through the show uh, about abandoned children. And the same network, or I don't know, some other network, I was asking my colleagues here to give me some examples of some really fast representation of women that they've seen in the recent past. And the first example that came was from television. Uh, I'm sitting in Chennai and somebody gave me the example of Kamal Hassan hosted Big Boss, no less, where there is a male, uh, you know, contestant who uh, speaks about a female contestant and says, she's not my type because her body is built like a Kambali, the equivalent in Tamil. So, well, Atari, as they say. So, I, I was appalled and uh, shocked to hear that this is actually happening on television and it's still happening in today's day and age. So, the point both of you made being that popular culture does have an influence on influencers and the content they make. So popular culture has its good, bad, and the ugly. So in terms of influencers, what can they, how, how, how do they ensure that they take in only the good when, uh, while for all good intents and purposes, numbers do matter. And we know, uh, we've got a filmmaker here, so we know the more negative and scaling the film reviews, the better the numbers are, and therefore we see a number of film influencers, film critics, so-called critics and reviewers who have cropped up overnight. So if influencers are living in this challenge, how do they speak the language of good? How do they ensure that they stay on that path? A brand has a compulsion to look good and do good. How does an influencer regulate himself or herself, especially on gender? Who wants to go first? See, I mean, you can't enforce, and uh, as you know, I'm also a board member of ASCII. A uh, lot of industry and government bodies, uh, you cannot enforce anything, you know. Um, there are certain things which are legal, you know, legal can be enforced. Though that's a minority, you know, 1%, 2%, you know, law can enforce. 99% is moral. So morality, you know, nobody can teach and enforce morality. So that's the reason why um, your upbringing, your own values, your own knowledge, your own perception of the world uh, molds your behavior and then molds, uh, influences your own work. Uh, you cannot really distinguish between, yeah, this is my work and then this is my personal life. This is what I do in my personal life. And this is what I do in my uh, private life. So I, I even know, I don't want to name, but you know, even news publications, and I would put, I don't want to take even the medium, where they're forced to be, forced to take certain side because of whatever compulsions, but they're still struggling to, to come towards the center um, uh, and then take a point of view of uh, voicing what is right. But it is always, you know, if you are running uh, something which is which you, where you are forced to commit, you know, the, the wrong things, and uh, um, even then, you know, there's a conscience to you. You as an individual, you try, you know, as much as you can with your own thing to make a difference and then to make. So there will be compulsion. There will be compulsions all around, you know, for everything. So one way is uh, is how do we uh, judge somebody's morality? You know, we cannot, you know, it has to come from within. I can't say that, you know, this is morally wrong. You should not do it. Who are you to judge? Correct. It is up to the creators. And I, I think, you know, if you look at all the people, uh, you have been influencers for very, very long time or where they have huge influence, they've been consistent with their values. They're not consistent with anything else. They're consistent right. with their values. Um, so those values are, uh, you imbibe, you know, not genetically. You know, it, you, you will not, you know, we've seen certain businessmen where their previous generation con conducted businesses in an in a honest, transparent way in the next generation coming in and taking the dishonest route to really uh, do that. So certain things which we can't, and it has to come from within, and uh, you cannot, you know, how many rules government can put? 
But see, already today, you know, uh, you cannot run an ad without three disclaimers. And uh, for creative people, there is a rule book, you know, do's and don'ts from every authority. You cannot, you know, uh, you cannot. So it is up to the conscience of the person who's creating the content to really feel that uh, what is ethically correct, what is morally correct, what is legally correct, and then make, make a distinction and, and then put out the content accordingly. Uh, that is when you uh, actually can uh, uh, can make you know somebody once told me in a in a client's office that pops you know all these good good things will not make people uh, people you know really react. I said you know yeah. you know ninety nine percent of the people are optimists and then they are good people. It is only one person you know who are very bad. So even if you put the content, put that to perspective, you know, I, in their own office, I had put a tweet saying that, you know, ex-businessman has constructed the most expensive bungalow for himself. And ex-businessman, um, without taking the name, uh, has constructed, has given 10% of his earnings to an educational uh, purpose and uh, do good um, was the hashtag. And there was tremendous, you know, 2,000 responses came in immediately. That was under my personal handle, not even a client's handle. Just to prove that if you have a point of view, you put it bluntly and make people to make a judgment. You are not saying X is good, Y is bad. But you are leaving it, you are juxtaposing two things and it is your choice. And then 90% of the people will not say that I want to build a great bungalow for myself. You know, as long as I have a decent living space is fine. But at the same time, I want along with my children one more other child to also get education. But if you are preachy, they won't take it. Correct? If you leave the choice to them, they'll appreciate you. And then they will uh, respond to that. So it is all about your conscience when you are actually making and then doing that. Don't do it in a way which does not have a point of view. Like every content creator must have a point of view and then people subscribe to your point of view. And then if you are saying it is okay to have tattoos wherever you want, it's your point of view. And a lot of people subscribe to that. Some people don't subscribe. You don't have to appeal to the people who don't sub subscribe if you believe. And if you believe that should, body should be pure and then you should not have tattoos, you go by that. That's your conviction. People respect you for your point of view, not to appeal people. So do the things which you believe strongly and uh, people will follow for that belief. And that is what I need. Because all the people who are uh, following, not creating, are looking for some kind of uh, endorsement of their view from a third person. That is where the influencing uh, influencer content will come, whether it is a feature film or whether it is a theater or whether it is... Uh, a radio program or whether it is a Facebook post or Instagram reel. So before we get into the QA, I think uh, as as a filmmaker, Ashwini, what how do you think creators, influencers can actually deal with issues like body positivity, consent choices, redefining gender roles, and so on? Yeah, without being preachy, coming back from Fox's point. You can't be preachy. You can. It's okay to have a point of view. You can't be preachy, and but you have to speak, you know, authentically. How how do you see influencers? There are two aspects to this. To simplify the question, one is to do great gender empowering work to show emancipation of women and so on. The other is in everyday roles, in everyday conversations, to be a little sensitive in how you portray them. Now, as a creator yourself, what what would you tell the influencer world on how they can make a bit of a difference on both these things? I think the one thing which I should really appreciate all influencers is that they have very beautifully managed bo body positivity. And that's like a huge applause to all of them. Um, I, I don't know how many of them are here, but uh, body positivity influencers actually are the ones who have created a huge impact on on normal people. Uh, because the normal people, when when they uh, start, th that's why I said fashion is such a big thing is because fashion is just not about, about you know, the new styling or the, how you can style your clothes or what you could do. But uh, to have like, you know, 
uh, influencers who who are on uh, on the uh, on the a larger side and to talk about the body positivity and to like be very uh, 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 to smile and to just make sure that they they encourage everyone to uh, to uh, to be themselves is a huge thing so great applause for that is because that is what was needed is that uh, clothes are not only for some kind of uh, uh, some kind of sizes clothes size are zero and uh, and it's for everyone and everyone who wants to there's no one who can tell you what you should wear or how you should wear or what what suits you what suits you is what you feel like wearing that day uh, so uh, so i think that's a huge uh, applause to everyone out there the second thing which i feel is that uh, unlike making a movie which takes about a year and you know there's so much more which goes into it uh, as influencer this there is so much a uh, more you could do because uh, the medium is very instant and uh, if i would just request all influencers to just like every week take up one topic and and rejoice that topic which creates a lot of positive impact for women and women just not from a particular uh, class of society but women across across society so even if it is like you know uh, having your uh, having your house help who does multiple jobs and i think she is the one who is always very happy and i do not know how they get so much of uh, uh, so much of positivity and happiness from that there's so much we can learn from them that they do so much they get up at 5 in the morning they go do their housework but then they still come they get dressed they wear their gajra they'll come home they'll do the work and still be happy smiling and never say a no how do they do that so i think it would be really nice for influencers to every week choose one one person who they feel has influenced them or and and not necessarily everything has to be in english it can be in the language they're most comfortable in so it it is really nice to see just not hindi and english but to also see um uh, influencers talking in the language they would like so for example there is this amazing uh, gujarati rap which has happened right now which uh, b has also picked it up and is actually uh, uh, it's actually there in uh, advertising for the diwali ad uh, who would have thought you know that that would become so famous it's sung by this young girl who's a lead singer uh, and uh, i do feel that that's where it should be that we 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 focus on that i see very few influences very very few influences who focus on women writing it is only the liter literary world who who does that uh, i would love if uh, social influences who are who are mainstream influences who also talk about women writers and 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 books uh, which are influenced so that we also encourage the habit of writing what is what is an instagram post or it's just not about the video it's also about what you're posting out there so uh, it would be really nice to do that i would also request influencers to be which i've always spoken about is that that there is a reality and then there is a video reality uh, to be as close to reality i know everyone wants to look good on camera and everyone wants to make sure that they are they are out best there but but influencers can have a have have a positive impact on 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 society in itself and they can also have a uh, sometimes a negative influence also that you know i'm not good enough so i would love love influencers like i remember uh, a very beautiful post of sonam kapoor which she had put like years back uh, years back where she had very nicely and no one i don't think so i told her to do it she just wrote it as because she is a actress and every day she has to be uh, her at her best when she is in front of camera or she is going out or she is in the media and uh, you know how how quickly everyone can can sham uh, with the kind of clothes you wear or how you are or what kind of makeup you put uh, there is there is a negative influence for everyone there's a point of view on everyone and everything people do and people are nowadays so what she had put is like you know that for this one look which i create i have like 15 people helping me so just be yourself you know but it, for me this is needed is because 
because i that's my job that's my business uh, that's my profession but you know don't get don't get influenced in the in in that you know why am i not good enough but sure. but understand that what what it could be for me to be uh, to me my best version of myself in my own space um competition is a huge thing amongst influencers and i think it's very important uh, to just make sure that that everyone is following their own path and their journey uh, to just make sure because people believe what you say they believe it they they will go and use even the makeup product which you use and say okay you know if she has used it and her her lipstick is so looking so beautiful or eyes are looking so beautiful i am also going to go and buy it okay. so it it is a very responsible profession as an influencer uh, so responsibility comes uh, with uh, when you're responsible and this kind of when you have hundreds of people looking at you and listening to you every day that comes with a lot of responsibility Okay. Wonderful. Uh, Shridhar sir, I think we're running out of time. Dr. Sharda can let us know. Should we move to the questions? Would you want to add something, uh, sir, before we move on? I, I think, you know, talking about um, about uh, sensitive towards the body shaming or, you know, uh, the tone of the skin and stuff like that, you know, whether it is fortunate or unfortunate, that uh, because of my profession, I got uh, stuck to beauty creams, um, especially products like whitening cream, like Fair and Lovely for many years. Uh, and I've been involved with fairness creams from uh, from almost you know ninety one to to I don't know you know till two thousand fourteen. Um, so it's long time, long time, different brands, different companies, different thing. Um, so always it's very uncomfortable zone when you're commercially for your profession, if you have to do uh, that, uh, that it transforms you, makes you beautiful. Dula aega, mujhe ghode pe bithaega, Rajkumar, or le jaega become fairer and you know everything happens when selling the mince and boon stories and fairy tales to everyone very very you know uncomfortable un uncomfortable zone uh, to be able to do that when you get the first opportunity uh, to make a difference you grab it and then you try to make it um, we had one in uh, um, in the year 2001 2002 when uh, when we could actually 2000, I think, you know, 2000, when we had an opportunity uh, of leaving the marriage, the marriage is not the only thing, you know, in a, in a girl's life. Uh, and then making her insecure that you are dark and then therefore you will never get a bright, um, a bright groom and uh, no, you, you are cursed and then you will li live like that. Forget about small towns, even big towns. Um, everywhere, you know that that's very, very big in South India, Bihar, uh, even uh, parts of you know North India too. You know where we think that it's fairer. Uh, one of the larger exports, you know, apart from Bangladesh, the fairness creams is also Russia. You know, out of all all countries. But when you had an opportunity, and then we twisted and saying that. Uh, only if women were to discover their own talent, they will become more desirable to men rather than looking good. Because that point in time, I remember that uh, especially um, travel to some eight cities, uh, eight small towns across the country, uh, sitting with the research group, uh, talking to young women, uh, talking to mothers, talking to parents, uh, talking to prospective boys who wanted to get married. So we came back and uh, um, then I have asked the research agency uh, to uh, go back and ask one more question. You know, there was no, not that much of 
you know online polling or google uh, right. sheets that time so they did it in three centers um, i've asked them to twist the uh, question and then say that uh, ask people you know all the boys who are the most beautiful women in his life and i have asked the mothers also to say that who are the three most beautiful women in your life and we have asked the um, girls all the who are the most three beautiful women in their life so the answer is uh, is not aishwarya rai the answer is not shushmita sen the answer here is not lisa ray or any of those people started writing their own mother grandmother their mother their daughter granddaughter so the the way we look and then the way we create the stimulus the answers will come because of the stimulus people respond to the stimulus which you ask and uh, uh, balki and i shifted the conversation from um, from just you know becoming fair to discovering your own talent of course you know later they started abusing that also and then started beauty presents and all the first one which we did was um, a boy falls in love with a girl uh, only listening to her singing he never gets to see her face and he falls in love uh, with her you know through terrace uh, in in chennai it was one of those terrace loves where uh, the singing teacher comes and then she sings but he never gets a glimpse of the girl he falls in love with her voice uh, so sometimes um, the content which you put in you know, a if you were to make uh, looking good is desirable um, good looking girls as desirable then your mind will always search for good looking girls if you say that talent you know you love music and then you find somebody who loves music who loves reading and who loves interacting with people who loves to laugh who loves to enjoy life then you start searching for those qualities in the girls you know whom you wanted to or the vice versa so the moment you know you change you know things if your mother way to be the most beautiful person why not as a fashion designer as a fashion stylist style her and then celebrate her during the fashion week correct you are a fashion designer you have a mom you have a wife you have a daughter correct and whatever way uh, you can you know if you can uh, really uh, take the biases and then the beauty is something which you see in your head close your eyes and then see it in your head and if you make beauty not physical but emotional then suddenly you know it changes so that is one of the things you know which uh, which i am i'm very um, um very pleased that you know you see the content of people unabashedly um, celebrating their mothers uh, you know celebrating even the stars who do not look good south indian stars or north indian stars it is not the body color which is, uh, anyway is at one point in time rajnikanth uh, used to have jokes on himself about his color but uh, today you see dhanush and then you see all the um, other actors you know it's not it's not you know uh, uh, racist anymore uh, it's not stereotyping anymore there is a lot of change which is happening you need to be little sensitive when you are actually creating that content you know who's the ideal person get it so the ideal person does not have a heart and then have an a, a robotic heart will you even you know you can't even have a cup of tea with them correct you have all the six packs and then you are done <laughs> what will happen you know nothing yeah. correct it is just that you know the compatibility the live liveliness and then the common passions and uh, how the people get connected with a lot of things all these are very rich subjects when you actually dig deep forget the differences and find the commonalities probably you will find a better and richer ground and then i think one of the biggest um, uh, i just was i was just going uh, reading something and one of the 
uh, magazine uh, editors, uh, there was something called All About Beauty or something, some conference which was held recently. And uh, there was a very beautiful line which uh, one of the fashion influencers and stylists, I think Anaita Arjania, who, who someone I think uh, definitely should be spoken to. She said uh, that brown skin has never been researched across the across the world. We have never been our 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 point of a point of distinction or our uh, uh, how we could look at ourselves is always against white skin or you know or or uh, or uh, African skin, but brown skin has never been discussed, has never been a part of any discussion. So there is no enough research at all. See somehow you know uh, and, uh, and so. Like for influencers to start talking about brown skin, about to feel, uh, to be an apologetically brown skin, uh, to uh, to uh, to surface that is, I think, very very important because let's let's not, uh, the uh, let's not hide away from the fact that on Instagram, on any of the social influencers thing, everyone is uh, the most most talked about thing is always beauty and fashion. And how you look. Uh, uh, there is no, there is no uh, two ways about it, uh, or any challenges there is because that is what is always talked about. Um, uh, I would request influencers to to encourage brown skin, to encourage the idea of, uh, and some of the uh, some of the fashion influencers like Anaita, like. Uh, 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 th uh, this woman who has uh, has opened her own magazine called The Word, uh, they have all been doing some amazing work where they are only talking about how white hair is good, how brown skin is good, how pimples are okay, how how double chins are fine, how a flab is fine. Nice. No, do you think we? Uh, sorry, sir. Do you want to say something? No, I, I think you know. Uh, as she was talking about uh, fashion, there was a time then uh, even white skin was not good enough globally, and more so uh, with Indian fashion uh, in nineties, you know, where uh, people used to go after um, Brazilian, you know, skin which is tanned and a uh, 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 little browner in shade. So a lot of you know fashion models uh, at that time across the world, including a lot of Indian commercials also. We were not okay at that in point in time. Um, models like uh, Nina Manuel or uh, uh, or um, uh, um, Anu, uh, I, I I don't you know recall all the names that time. But they were okay with uh, little darker skin uh, you know coming from exotic places, you know, Brazil was uh, one of the biggest South Africa, Brazil. So these kind of places. Uh, so we have never looked at, you know, we have never looked at even, uh, you know, very nice to see the other day, you know, Fab India or some other fashion um, online store has a lot of uh, um, darker skin uh, girls wearing uh, beautiful costumes and uh, stuff like that. So it is. It is an important factor. The color of skin um, is also a, a, a bit of an issue in the fashion industry, and uh, we need to confront. You know, as I said, you know, every man is beautiful, irrespective of the skin color. You know, um, so every um, not just women, even men also. You know, for that matter, how many men who are there who are darker skin, um, who are celebrated as uh, popular pinup uh, poster boys? You know, very few. So color of the skin, all the biases, you know, whatever uh, the biases which are there, I'm not talking just about gender, but all the biases which are there, you know, still we are living in a city like Bombay, where it is very difficult if you're not Hindu to get a get an apartment for rent. You know, what are we talking about? If you're a single girl, um, uh, working woman, you know, you will not get an apartment to live unless there are 30 assurances which have been given to them. So there are a lot of biases which are there, and, and influences play a large role in uh, in shifting those. Um, so I mean, it, it's a subject which you can 
go on you know more is less here but like uh, um, like uh, ashwini started with eternal optimism <laughs> that lot of good things are happening a lot of good things are happening and uh, you know as an older person i can only say that uh, i am more greedy i want more things to happen so that i can see in my lifetime more changes coming in but we are at a very good place uh, as uh, uh, google has said is that enough you know uh, is that change which has happened is enough not but certainly we started a good journey and believe me uh, even countries like uh, us europe uh, uh, and uh, latin american company uh, countries to to multi race uh, countries you know all the countries which have got uh, people uh, from different races and religions are finding the same same issues and same problem we are no different no different um, statistics say that 60% of the world wealth is created by women both rural and urban women and uh, not even uh, 20% of global wealth uh, is owned by women so women create more wealth uh, and then they keep less and then give it back to the world to claim that it is their wealth uh, so there are they are big hearted and uh, we deserve to applaud them and then we deserve to put them in a place where they should be owning 60% of the wealth 60% of power and 60% of everything because they are more than men in every respect so i just wanted to and they and open to anyone asking me any questions yeah i just before we open to questions thank you rashmi thank you pops uh, i i believe uh, from one unsubstantiated source that women also uh, you know account for a larger share of influencer marketing earnings on a per head basis so maybe richly deserved as well yeah uh, uh, gokul before we proceed with the q and a session there was a slight um, uh, uh, we would like to introduce the panelists which we have not done when we started the conversation well, the two of them don't need introductions but yeah please go ahead over to hetal yeah just a brief introduction i don't think they need introductions but yes kv shridhar is the founder and chief creative officer of hyper collective and an ascii board member with 45 plus years of in marketing advertising and technology he is the global uh, chief creative officer at nihilent limited and founder of hyper, Coll hyper collective he holds a bsc in botany chemistry and zoology and is a recipient of creative achievement award renowned for merging creativity and technology he crafts impactful stories driving business outcomes and ashwini ayer tiwari uh, she is a filmmaker former advertising professional she gained she gained acclaim directing films like neel batte sanata and bareilly ki barfi with a background in advertising at leo burnett she transitioned into filmmaking winning accolades including the film fair award for best director ashwini is also a published author and co-founder of earth sky pictures and the conversation was moderated by gokul krishnamurthy gokul is a independent marketing consultant and columnist co-founder and group a group consulting editor of uplift media news for you and the editor of the free press journal free press journal brand sutra thank you thank you should we open this up to questions now and uh, how are the mod questions posed to the speakers dr sharda or someone from population first um yes we can open it up to questions uh, participants can unmute themselves and ask if they want to and put it in the chat and we'll take them up yeah and i request you and a team also to ask questions if they have any no questions No 
questions, no observations? Anuja? No, Sharda, it's been a very, very interesting discussion. And uh, I'd only like to sincerely express my gratitude uh, to uh, Sridhar and uh, Ashwini ji and Gopul. I mean, some very, very relevant points on, you know, uh, body shaming, on issues of uh, body image, etc., that came up, skin color, etc. So very interesting. And particularly, uh, you know, points around how is it that the community we are interacting with today, the influencers can really integrate uh, gender issues in a very subtle manner into what they are doing. So thank you so much for uh, uh, your expert comments. Thank you. Anybody else from UNFPA would like to say something? Dolly, would you like to say anything? Mr. Sister. Okay, then we... Uh, I might want to just add that one point that uh, Sridhar raised, which was really very critical, is that uh, it's not really about the length of what one is producing, but, you know, you can produce really sensitive content even in in a really short time, like 30 seconds to a minute. I mean, that's something we all grapple with, or, you know, a lot of people grapple with. And every time we are also internally as UNFPA colleagues looking at putting out something there, we say, oh, how can we do it in, you know, in a couple of minutes, but very relevant point you raised there on the length and, uh, and Ashwini on, uh, you know, how we are transitioning and uh, you know how influencers have really played an important role in bringing about the change that we are seeing today so thank you so much uh, again for those comments yeah shall we close uh, puja if there are no questions then... there are no questions okay i would like to you know know any influencer who wanted to have a chat either we are brilliant or we are too boring for you guys Anyone wants to take up the challenge and ask something? <laughs> I thought influences will be very talkative and, uh, you know, the conversation would be very interesting and uh, lively. I don't know. You can ask in any language. You can speak in any language and also... Yeah, feel free to express your views, positive, negative. It's not necessary that you have to like this program, right? Absolutely, Sharda. Thank you so much for this insightful, uh, you know, Google Meet. It was first time that we are also experiencing this kind of association with any brand of such sorts. So, of course, everything was pretty much on the, you know, very insightful manner. Everybody have pointed out it was very interactive session as well. So thank you for the opportunity to for us also to you know get into this track where we are influencing um, you know our followers at this point of time. So this has been an amazing journey with you guys. Thank you. I'm somehow very much uh, interested in uh, talking to Gatesh. Hey, Gatesh, how was the workshop? Is there? Yes, he's there. Uh, maybe we should open it up uh, for the discussion we were having earlier, Sharda, and having, uh, you know, uh, uh, heard uh, uh, experts talk on this. Uh, we should probably look at asking colleagues here on how is it that they could uh, look at integrating gender in whatever they're doing, what are the challenges that they would face and how to overcome them. And we could get some insights from, uh, you know, Sridhar Gopal, Ashwini, all of them here. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. So, any uh, anybody willing to start the conversation? Like, Gatesh, you are lifestyle pe yeah. Kaam karte hai, na? yeah, correct. So, how do you think you can integrate any of the messages that we spoke about or whatever Sridhar and Ashwini have spoken? Is it possible at all for you to do that? And what are the challenges in doing it? Yeah, yeah. See, obviously it is possible, but then the brands also want it in a manner that um, 
so you should be in a certain you should be have a you should have a certain looks you should be you should look a certain way then only your content gets approved so for example if i get more brands i get it because uh, the way i look or the the way i can speak so uh, what happens is the, even the brands are not ready to take people who are not very i would say not very attractive or uh, or may not can like or may not be able to say their information in a very good manner so that's the major difference that the brand also like discriminate people on the basis of that and apart from that what i uh, noticed that basically few influencers what they are doing is they are promoting obesity in the name of body positivity so i don't think it's a right way to promote something basically you can have a see basically a healthy body is something but then obesity is something else uh, what happens in the whole uh, strata of body positivity that people are uh, like promoting obesity also that being obese is also fine but i don't think uh, like uh, you can not put everything into body positivity because it does not make sense at the end of the day you need to have a healthy body and a healthy uh, physique to get your work done so that's also an influence which is going on a negative side like Uh, if anybody else would like to come in, uh, you know, there was a point of view here, then we, you know, yes, Preet Jyot, so why don't you come in? Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, thank yeah. you, Yatesh, for that. Um, it's really a very tricky uh, uh, observation. Uh, I want to know yeah. from Ashwini and Sridhar whether uh, in the name of body positivity, are we uh, promoting uh, unhealthy lifestyles or uh, what is your take on it? I'm very confused to tell you frankly. Yeah, there's two things, you know, one uh, um, one he said about uh, brands are not willing to accept not good looking people. That's one. Uh, the second one uh, um, which he said in the name of uh, Obesity is good, um, uh, is not bad, it's good. And uh, therefore, you know, it's healthy to be like that and then pass off gym. You know, it all depends if it is for junk food and uh, it's okay uh, uh, to be obese, but you have to eat, you know, what you like. Then it is in, it, it's in bad taste, you know. Um, so it all depends how... Uh, you shape your own values and your own point of view on, on things uh, because the brand needs an influencer. It's not the influencer needs the brand, correct? You already have. So you already have an upper hand. Uh, so a lot of places where you get into this kind of dilemma, um, you already have captive audiences, correct? And then you, you wanted to cast... Uh, um, a particular person in that where a brand is paying you to do that and if they don't um, like what you are suggesting and then aren't twisting you to do that by all means do it you know at the end of the day you also have to earn money and then your consciousness yeah. if it is allows then by all means do it but do it in a way that you want to prove the point back to them so what we do in in uh, marketing, uh, if there were to be a conflict like this, we do A-B testing. So A-B testing is, I put the same content with uh, two different stimulus, two different uh, people. So one, I'll put it in one market. The other content, I'll put it in another market, which is what I want to do. For instance, you know, somebody says that Mude Koi, you know, uh, should look beautiful, should have a nice body. And in the other content, no, you know, you don't need, you need a bubbly girl, does not matter how she looks. And then you take the bubbly girl and create the content on your own. You take the good looking girl, what client wants, and then do that also. Release one in one city, release one, because you can, you can uh, um, control the geographies. You can either, you can get, do it with the permission of the client, or you can do it by yourself. So then the num numbers itself will throw up. If one, you know, which is more, far more fun, bubbly, you know, an average looking girl actually adding to the content, you know, the way um, a client is intended to, the other one, the client is biased to the look of a 
of your casting and then they will understand once they understand then they will start believing you trusting you and uh, then you know leaving uh, those decisions to you rather than they interfering have you got my point just try it out test yeah it. yeah correct so and then you will see a better result Sure. Apologies. I thought we'll take uh, uh, you know the responses at towards the end. So I moved on to Preet Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, you are. Uh, uh, um, I have something regarding Yatesh's observation. Can I say it right now? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, when. Uh, it's not from a very marketing point of view on how to market it, but from a very moral point of view, uh, the two observations that he made are very contradictory, where at one point, uh, there's a talk about how brands are biased towards good looking people. And then you say that a person who is not fitting into the norm, who is a little... Uh, fat or as uh, so as they say uh, they are obese or something and they the body positivity movement is to create a space where they can be themselves it's more about neutrality and just gaining respect for how they are then promoting something because they are fat and they look a certain way and they don't see the representation in mainstream media. So they are creating a space for themselves. So I don't think it's really promoting something. It's more of creating a space because a lot of uh, things that we associate to health are not really about health and a lot of other factors so medical things also come into consideration when it's about the body shape that's just like i just found those two observations very contradictory to each other I thought very good yeah, very I good thought, observation yeah i thought they were independent I also, of feel, um, I also feel that everything we do as an influencer or, or as a storyteller will always have a positive and a negative side mm -hmm. to it so at one point of time we say that you know uh, that we should not be body shaming and at the other side if if we have like influencers being unapologetic about what they are and how how they present themselves or how they are encouraging uh, every young woman to not for example my daughter has uh, curly hair and uh, she uh, she uh, come she's not she comes on the from the brown skin side and uh, the first thing which we actually did was that i showed her pictures of uh, of girls who who are brown skin and who have curly hair and how they dress up themselves so well is because uh, because uh, she would have that kind of thing as uh, as a growing up teenager that there are girls who would be more fairer than her or have who would be the quintessential what you expect from them. So uh, I don't think so. It is how you take it. Uh, because uh, not every uh, everyone. Um, so there would be a lot of uh, 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 influencers who would be uh, oversized, but uh, um, but and sure, they must be going through their own issues, but you cannot judge them because they are being unapologetic about themselves. So, yeah, shall we? One close? more question, uh, Shartaji, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, like when we talk about, uh, you know, one is developing a gender sensitive content, but the other thing is whatever existing content we have, how to integrate gender in that. At the same yes. time, for example, the steps, uh, like one is to be having a gender inclusive language, a gender fair language. What are the other, these, you know, small steps that as influencers they can take? Yeah, I think uh, Ash Ashwini and uh, Sridhar are the best people to answer that. <laughs> In whatever content which we are doing, um, it could be food, it could be fashion, or it could be fun or uh, you'd be doing about gadgets, or you'd be doing about anything, you know, whatever you do. There is uh, one societal norm, and uh, there is another thing. Um, 
he's opposite to societal norm. You don't expect people to do that. Um, you know, but then you take, you know, am I mean, doing by taking the societal norm uh, and then stereotyping it? What would, you know, your mindset and your view about that? You know, if you were Absolutely. to be that, what would you do? Correct. If you were to have it, that's the reason why I said you need to have your own take and point of view. And uh, even if you're selling, uh, you know, headsets uh, for a, uh, for a, um, a personal, you know, uh, entertainment products, how do you do content? You know, whom do you want to show? How do you, what do you want to cast? You know, do you want, you know, um, two boys to have fun or a boy and girl to have fun or um, three girls and a boy to have fun? So it is all, you know, uh, at that age, you know, what is what is important to them, you know, uh, 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 it's a white paper, you know, uh, to you, you know, how do you cast and then what kind of things, you know, usually what happens, you know, two friends or a boy and girl, uh, correct, or a boy with um, more appeal, you know, if you have two girls, correct, why not three girls having a fun with a boy, correct. <laughs> So it is, it is just that your perception, you know, you know, what angle you wanted to show, what is the content, you know, which you wanted to do it. You want, are you selling, um, um, are you selling music? Are you selling the taste of music? Are you selling uh, aesthetics uh, um, driven uh, uh, accessory uh, to people? What are you selling? You know, it is the body, body rhythm which you are selling. You know, what is the kind of music which you are putting and whom do you want to cast? How do you want to make that happen? So if there is anything which, uh, you know, to everyone, you know, when we are actually seeing through the camera or thinking that through, you know, why can't we do something which is different? You know, why can't we have one person with long hair and one person with shorter hair? Or why do you have to show a girl like a girl or a girl like a boy? Or why can't we mix, you know, all three genders, you know, into one? So you always think that, you know, what I should do, depending on the kind of uh, values which you set uh, for yourself. So that is where you can include things. You know, it could be anything, you know. I'm not saying uh, that it needs to be only on gender. It could be on racial discrimination, economic discrimination, body discrimination, or uh, environment uh, concern. Anything, small act which you put in your content will go a long way. Correct. Even if you are doing with a uh, with a celebrity and then he is unboxing, so you know this little care about when he is unboxing, put that unboxed you know the material into a dustbin makes a lot of a uh, lot of environmental you know consciousness to people because he's putting and then if he's throwing that away and then only looking at the object, so it becomes you don't know you know when you are creating this. But the impact of seeing all that will be there on the audience, correct? And then these are the things which you need to be sensitive. You know, once we created a beautiful emotional um, advertising uh, for McDonald's, but we have forgotten to check that driver of the bus, you know, is not wearing his seat belt, and then we pull that off air and losing so much of money. Because it's just that, you know, finally when you do it, having that little check if you're aware of it, Having that little checkbox in your head, and then you'll be able to create content, which which is, uh, and it it is all on your consciousness. And then you can integrate anything. There are millions of issues which are there, and then you can integrate any one of the issues. Not necessarily all the time gender will fit in, or you have to force with gender into it. Whatever content which you are doing, anything which is good for the planet, anything which is good for humanity, which propagates a good value, even a simple. Uh, simple pat on a dog on the street while walking, you know, makes a lot of difference to to the way kindness to to uh, stray dogs and animals. So it it does not in your shot it does not mean anything to anyone. But over a period of time, that little gesture, you know, which people see it makes a whole lot of difference to the viewers. Correct? You got your answer, or uh, been too long? No, no, absolutely. I think I did get my answer. Thanks so much for that. Yeah, it's very important to, you yeah. know, be conscious of the small things also. It's not just about the main protagonist, what is the script, you know, the way you show the ecosystem is also very important. There was one very 
good at about uh, father and son discussing the good points of a mobile phone and you show the woman the you know the mother uh, in the background uh, watering the plants and then moving it totally it's precious part of the background that is very wrong way of projecting because you know why can't she be part of the conversation why can't or you know why don't you show her in a more um in as part of the whole context you know so these are some things which we generally make mistakes because we think it is nice to show her in the periphery doing something and not being bothered about this conversation about a what which mobile phone to buy or uh, whatever it is between the father and son so one it says women are not interested in uh, mobiles or buying mobiles or decisions regarding that and that women men are the ones who decide on mobiles and they know more about it whether it is a 15 year old child or a 50 year old man so that is you know it's a very subliminal messaging which is very uh, which is very uh, harmful in a way because these cute cute pictures are the ones which cause the maximum damage i'm sorry i will have to leave now because i yeah, have I'm sorry we have really kept you for a long time yeah. thank you so much ashwini and thank you so much uh, shridhar garu thanks a lot Thank and gokul had to leave a little early we had some other thing and thanks all the participants and please feel free to contact us any time you have to you have any questions or anything and uh, ashwini you can leave i just have one small before thing before i uh, sharda before you, she leaves, i you. would like to just yeah. call upon all the influencers to look at her short film by the ghar ki murgi dal barabar i love it ashwini and i use it in all my training so i really encourage all of you to see that uh, yeah, yeah we have a, yeah that's very correct we before the influencers leave i have to say what is it, what is the ask from you can you show that uh, slide pooja so we would like you to yeah incorporate whatever messages you can in your uh, uh, in your messaging uh, or you can uh, apart from your regular um, commercial product, uh, you know promotions you could also do something it doesn't matter if you don't get as many likes and uh, views as the other communication but make something interesting on gender put it and third thing is we have something called the 25 days of uh, 16 so days of activism 15, 16 days of activism which starts from 25th november and 10th uh, up to 10th december this is a day which is uh, this is a uh, fortnight which is uh, designated for focusing on issues related to gender based violence and uh, we uh, we there are many number of days in that we have the uh, world aids day human rights day Uh, uh, violence against women so many uh, uh, days are there you can pick up any of those and then put some nice uh, content on the, on those days and uh, i would um, also like you to you know um, uh, unfpa would be promoting producing lot of social media content i would request all of you to please we'll share it with you please do put it on your platforms it will help a lot in promoting the content uh, and reaching to the you know people you are uh, in um, who, people who are following you and similarly your content if it is uh, uh, it meets the requirements of the unfpa they will be happy to put it on their platforms also thank you so much for your time and thanks to tan pooja kate anuja uh, for all the support thank you so much thank you Thank you so much, Akiva. Okay, shall we leave now the meeting?